Chapter 221, The Binding Skill. In this age, knowledge was very expensive, which led to the spread of mysterious knowledge from individuals to individuals, and the appearance of private libraries. It was said that before the catastrophe, there were large-scale public library in many cities and regions. Those libraries would always contain tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of books, or even millions of books. At that time, people could absorb the knowledge that they needed from the sea of knowledge at the cost of little money or none at all. However, in this age, that kind of scene was completely unimaginable. As far as Zhang Tai knew, there wasn't a single public library in the entire Andaman Alliance, even across the whole Blacks and Human Clan corridor. In this age, all the libraries were private, while all the books were very important personal assets. To manage a private library was the same to managing a plant or a shop as they could all bring you profit. There were two private libraries in Black Hot City. They were all operated by the families that had once predominated the Coal, Steel, and Iron Federation. Although Zhang Tai stayed in Black Hot City for over ten years, he had not entered them even once. When he had time to visit there, he had no money, while when he had money, he had no time to visit. For Zhang Tai, the position of the Director of No. 9 Equipment Administration could almost be ignored. After seeing the hope of recovery and the fruit of redemption, he left his tenement early the next morning. He had a lot of questions and some unclear thoughts in his mind, which all needed to be solved and clearly formed by knowledge. If this was Black Hot City and the guy Donder was still there, Zhang Tai would have definitely asked him about all of his questions. However, in Blaypi, he knew no one and nobody could solve his problems or enlighten his unclear thoughts. What could solve his problems and enlighten his unclear thoughts was only knowledge. If he wanted to obtain it, the simplest way was to go to a library. After all, he had enough time to spend there now. Like what was said before the catastrophe, he was going to charge himself. Although he had not recovered yet, the ripe fruit of brilliance and the unripe fruit of judgment made Zhang Tai's spirits rise in the morning once more. He looked energetic as he finally didn't feel like he was too weak to even catch a bound chicken. The god rune's bind effect implied that Zhang Tai could protect himself without even relying on his own hands. After putting on his clothes and cleaning his face and teeth, Zhang Tai left the room. At this moment, he used his spiritual energy to present the list of binding skills attributes in his mind. God Rune's Binding Skill Rank, Preliminary The current number slash maximum storage number of binding chain, 2 18 Attack Radius, 17 inch Attack Effect, Spiritual Attack It can temporarily cut and terminate the nerve chain of the opponent's brain, putting a screen between the opponent's brain and its body. The one hit will be stiff all over and unable to move at all. Applicable targets, LV7 fighters and those below, who have the same brain structure as Castle Lord. The sustainable attacking time of preliminary binding chain is calculated as follows, the spiritual energy attack strength of Castle Lord minus the spiritual attack immunity effect of the opponent. After that, multiply the previous result by 10 seconds, namely the basic sustainable time of one preliminary binding chain. The maximal superposed number of binding chains that can be borne by an individual being attacked is 3. These were the attributes of the binding skill after the god rune formed its first binding chain. This skill seemed to be able upgrade. After Zhang Tai had almost exhausted his spiritual energy last night, the god rune formed two binding chains. Now, the two binding chains were swimming around that god rune like two small snakes in Zhang Tai's mind. Zhang Tai planned to exert his utmost effort to form all the 18 binding chains in the next few days. That god rune was like a finished factory. As long as Zhang Tai constantly injected his spiritual energy into it, it could process his spiritual energy into binding chains. He estimated that the distance of 17 inches was equal to 7 to 8 m or so. Needless to say, the target of binding chains should have similar brain structure as Zhang Tai. For the duration of the attack, after thinking for a while, Zhang Tai finally decided that if the target had not been blessed by some spiritual defense skill or had no similar equipment, its spiritual defense effect would be basically equal to zero. Therefore, this formula was almost simplified to Zhang Tai's spiritual energy divided by the target's spiritual energy and multiplied by 10 seconds. If Zhang Tai's spiritual energy was twice that of the opponent's, the opponent would not move for 20 seconds after being attacked by the binding chain. If Zhang Tai's spiritual energy was thrice that of the opponent, the opponent would not move for 30 seconds after being hit. Similarly, if Zhang Tai's spiritual energy was four times that of the opponent, the opponent would not move for 40 seconds. For this preliminary binding skill, if Zhang Tai's opponent with the same spiritual energy had not reached LV8, after being attacked with three binding chains consecutively, that guy would also not move for about half a minute. In this time, even if Zhang Tai's health was in a very poor condition, he could still stab that guy to death with his dagger. 
In contrast, if he met a commoner who had almost the same spiritual energy as him at school, with only one binding chain, he would be able to keep him still for nine to ten minutes. Even if the target was Huck or Snade, after being attacked by the binding chain, they would also not be able to move for three minutes. For spiritual defense, it had to be a rare mysterious knowledge that Zhang Tai had not heard of before. It could never be seen on commoners. When Zhang Tai wanted to launch the binding skill, once he gazed at someone, he would be able to do a long-distance attack in a pattern that he couldn't understand. For his current physical condition, this was simply a hidden sharp weapon. Although this preliminary binding skill only worked on people below LV7, had very short range, and was far off if he could do with his power and combat effectiveness of when he was healthy, at least this binding skill enabled Zhang Tai to protect himself when he couldn't fight at all. Feeling like he was useful again, Zhang Tai was in a pretty good mood today. In the early morning, the tenant of the third floor was still not back as her door was still closed. When Zhang Tai came to the second floor, the twenty-odd man of the couple was readying himself to leave, seemingly wanting to go to work while the twenty-odd women was seeing him off outside the room while pulling a kid. They were bidding farewell to each other. Right then, as the couple caught sight of Zhang Tai walking downstairs, both of them became slightly amazed. Not until then did they know that the new tenant who had moved in upstairs yesterday was a young military officer of the Norman Empire. Although he looked young, he was already a first lieutenant. Seeing Zhang Tai coming downstairs, that young woman silently pulled her kid closer to herself. Zhang Tai forced out a smile while slightly nodding to them before walking downstairs. In the early morning, the owners Mr. and Mrs. Green were watering flowers, grasses, onions, and fiddleheads that they grew for entertainment in the garden outside their residence. Good morning. Zhang Tai greeted the owners of the house. Mr. Green raised his grass hat to show his courtesy. Leaving the house of Mr. and Mrs. Green, Zhang Tai came to a tranquil street. After walking through the one-meter-wide street paved with pebbles for dozens of meters, Zhang Tai arrived at the avenue. Similar to Black Hot City, when people could not take public transport, most of the commoners in Blapii would then choose carriages to travel around the downtown. This transport, which could provide convenience for people in downtown areas, had an universal name across the Blacks and Human Clan corridor, Horse Taxi. Seeing a green horse taxi driving past, Zhang Tai hurriedly waved his hand towards the driver before jumping inside. Where's the best private library in Blapii? Sir, there's only one private library in Blapii, therefore, no matter what, it is the best one. Zhang Tai was somewhat stunned. Well, let's go there then. It's not cheap there. The driver kept driving the carriage while shaking his head. I really don't understand why people like reading books. Aren't beer and women more interesting than paper that could neither speak nor be eaten? Hearing his words, Zhang Tai didn't say anything. This must be different personal pursuits. After more than half an hour, the carriage finally brought Zhang Tai to his destination. After learning about the function of his spiritual energy, he had visualized two thirteen-column abacuses in his mind at the same time during the journey. He practiced different operations on two abacuses at the same time. It was hard to say whether it was because of his sharply increased spiritual energy. But when he carried out different operations on two visualized abacuses, Zhang Tai felt that it went much smoother. The sense of the two abacuses' independence became more clear. Additionally, interconnected faults obviously decreased a lot during the calculations. Here we are, sir, here is the best private library that five generations of Grant family has operated in Blapii. The horse taxi that carried Zhang Tai parked before a place which looked more luxurious than this city's parliament building. After paying 50 copper coins, Zhang Tai jumped off the carriage. With his eyes fixed on the seven-story building, Zhang Tai took a deep breath. This private library is very large. It should contain a lot of books. I hope it won't disappoint me. Like high-end hotels, this private library had a very gorgeous gate. Outside it stood two rows of doormen and armored guards. The entrance was marked with the name of this library, Grant's Library. This was a library named after its owner's family name. The library's first floor was an elegant hall with several rest zones. In them stood dozens of rows of cabinets which looked like lockers. Zhang Tai didn't know what they were used for. The moment he entered through the gate, he saw several plates placed in the most eye-catching place, on which were the terms of service. Besides them there was a board with reading instructions and another with instructions on using bibliographic retrieval. After carefully reviewing the two, Zhang Tai understood what the dozens of cabinets in the rest zones beside the hall were used for they contained the list with all the books in the library and where each one is placed. After swearing himself a rustic inside, Zhang Tai came to the bibliographic retrieval zone and started to look for books that he wanted to read. Time reading would be charged, but looking through the list was free. The bibliographic retrieval in the library contained very sophisticated classifications. 
Zhang Tai spent a whole hour searching through the complex retrieval catalog cards. After searching there for quite a while, he took the paper on which he'd copied down a couple retrieval numbers of books that interested him and came to the library service table. The one standing behind it was a sixty-odd man. After receiving the retrieval numbers, the old man lowered his head and looked behind the counter for a while. Then, some time later, he raised turned back. Sir, the books you chose are available now. With the exception of the book Initial Exploration of Human Beings' Special Professions in Black Iron Age, Gods, Codes, Oriental Occultism Phenomena, and Water Knows the Answer, are all rare books that our library purchased from the ruins of the prehistorical human cities. As their human publications of before the catastrophe, they are in the human ruins reading area on the fourth floor. The charge of reading on the fourth floor is two gold coins per day. Besides the books on the fourth floor, you can also read the books on the third and second floors. The charge of books on the third floor is 60 silver coins a day. If you want to read books on the third floor, you cannot read the books that you chose on the fourth floor today. Can you tell me which floor's books you'd like to read? The old man spoke in an inflexible manner. Hearing his explanation, Zhang Tai almost wanted to swear at him. Although he was much richer than before, he hadn't imagined that it would cost him two gold coins a day to read books on the fourth floor. F asterisk CK, this is almost equal to my dad's two-month salary. It had cost him only two gold coins to rent Mr. and Mrs. Green's house for a whole year. Although, Zhang Tai knew that the price of entering private libraries was very expensive, he had never imagined it could be this expensive. In this age, the price of knowledge was absolutely out of most people's imaginations. With two gold coins, Zhang Tai could only read books for one day in the private library. However, the business time of the library was from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., which meant that he could at most read for 12 hours. During the process, he could neither copy nor take photos. He should also wear a pair of gloves and pay for the damages according to preset prices if he made any. F asterisk CK. Zhang Tai swore inside. He then took out two gold coins. After signing a service contract, he was led into the human ruins readings area on the fourth floor. Zhang Tai had not seen the alleged human ruins of before the catastrophe in his life. He had only heard that most of the ruins were of cities and other regions where many humans lived, crashed by the fragments of the god star. They were in a special force field and existence brought about by the fragments of the god star. As a result, all the inanimate objects in the ruins still remained unchanged even after 1,000 years, as if the catastrophe had happened yesterday. Driven by a dream of becoming rich overnight after discovering some human ruins of before the catastrophe, numerous pioneers were heading every day for remote areas on all the continents to explore the wastelands. Glancing over the books on the shelves in the room that covered less than 500 square meters, Zhang Tai gritted his teeth, swearing to read as much as was the value of two gold coins. Chapter 222 The Value of Knowledge Most of publications before the catastrophe were easy to be identified. The printing skills of people before the catastrophe could not be surpassed by people of today at all. Many books in that age contained delicate images or photos, at the sight of which, people would know which age those particular books belonged to. What concerned that roughly printed book, Mental Arithmetic by Abacus, that Zhang Tai had bought from a roadside booth in the railway station which only had a few pages with no pictures except for an abacus on its cover, Zhang Tai was definitely very lucky to own it. Consumers who were able to read on the fourth floor were matched with a personal reading room, like a chartered room. When one read on the fourth floor, one should wear a pair of white gloves. In each reading room, there was a serviceman who just watched from the side in case you tried to copy or damage one of these books as valuable as cultural relics. Of course, you could also ask the serviceman to bring you books that you wanted to read. As a high-end customer who paid two gold coins in the library at once, Zhang Tai was also provided with two sumptuous meals, a lunch and a supper. If he was tired, he could also take a rest in the reading room. You could even take a nap on the sofa. The serviceman would also prepare a woolen blanket for you. However, nobody would feel like sleeping here at the cost of two gold coins which would leave only several hours to read. At least, Zhang Tai would feel great regret if he did that. With the exception of eating lunch and going to the toilet, he was immersed in reading for the entire day. He grit his teeth, wanting to make the two gold coins cost-efficient. With sharper spiritual energy, Zhang Tai found that he could read much faster than before. Additionally, his memory had also become very terrifying. He skimmed through the pages. He could read ten lines with only one glance, and it would take him only a bit more than ten seconds to finish reading a page. Even with such an amazing speed, Zhang Tai found that he could still clearly remember all the content on the pages. This time he found found another usage for his sharp spiritual energy besides remembering the sizes of the girls of the Rose Association. The fact was that Zhang Tai's two gold coins were very cost-efficient. 
In over 10 hours, he gained a lot of knowledge and information from the books. From the book God's Codes, written by a geneticist before the catastrophe, Zhang Tai learned what human DNA was and the differences between human DNA and other living beings' DNAs. Additionally, he came to understand that millions of his gene fragments were not activated yet, which accounted for above 98% of his total gene fragments. During the very long period before the catastrophe, as no discovery was made on these gene fragments, they were taken as useless, waste genes. However, the author of A God's Codes firmly believed that the Creator would not just put so many wastes into human body for no reason. As a geneticist, after dozens of years' research, the author found that the alleged waste genes in human body were not useless, instead, as their coded structures were too weird, they were not activated yet. After many years' research, the author also discovered that among the gene fragments that were not activated yet, there seemed to be weird codes that enabled people to survive in more special and extreme environments. In the end of the book, the author of A God's Codes also posed a puzzling presumption and prediction that if all the gene fragments in human body were activated, humans' DNA structure would totally change from double spiral structure to 12 spiral structure. Maybe the alleged God's DNA was in a 12 spiral structure. Why not an 11 spiral structure or 13 spiral structure or other spiral structures? Because basically everything was composed of energy of different frequencies. The whole universe is a huge acoustic generator that can perform all of the sounds with different frequencies. The frequencies and sounds performed by this acoustic generator cannot be perfectly harmonious and balanced without being evolved from the 12-tone equal temperament of the music theory. Therefore, according to the author's presumption, the 12-spiral DNA structure is in line with the essence of the universe. This is a structure that can satisfy one's will at any place in this universe. After reading this book, Zhang Tai recalled a human body's description that he had read in the Castle of Black Iron last night, your body contains everything like the gods. Zhang Tai felt like he understood something now. Although the 12 spiral DNA was just a brave presumption of the author of the book God's Codes, its entirety instantly broadened his vision and horizons. He saw something very exciting from the book. By this point already, Zhang Tai felt that the two gold coins had been valuable. In the book Oriental Occultism Phenomena, Zhang Tai had some more surprising discoveries. The author of this book mentioned that in the East, since the ancient times, monks and masters from mysterious schools had been guiding their believers to set free various animals to cure their diseases and health problems. Many tricky diseases that puzzled doctors in hospitals could see amazing treatment effects after the patients set free live animals. The author of the book also recorded how he accompanied a businessman who had a long-term eye disease to visit a master to cure that person's eyes. The occultism master told the patient that if he wanted to cure his eye disease, he only needed to set free crabs. After hearing the master's enlightenment, that person truly went to the crab sales center, tasked this by the mast, to buy some crabs and then set them free in the sea. He insisted on doing that twice a week. Each time he would buy several bamboo baskets of crabs. Several months later, the miracle happened. His eyes were cured without even taking any medicine. That person then went to the temple to extend his thanks to that master and asked him about the karma. The master told that person that as those crabs on the market were supposed to be cooked by people, before they were killed, all of them would become blind first. Since the man had saved those crabs and gave them a new life and sight, as payment, they gave him their sight too. The author of this book was a scholar in the Western continent. He attributed this phenomenon to intricate oriental occultism. However, Zhang Tai knew this was not occultism at all, it was true karma. All the crabs's appreciation to that person for saving their lives converged into spiritual energy which could help that person recover his health. The spiritual energy could not be seen by naked eye. However, water could sense it. The author of Water Knows the Answer was a scientist before the catastrophe. Through studying water, he found that the awareness energy of human and all other living beings could be projected onto places outside their bodies. This energy projected onto places outside their bodies then could influence the surrounding environment on macro substance level. When this energy was projected into a cup of water, it could make water form various crystals. The more love and positive emotions were included in the energy, the more regular and beautiful the water crystals would be. The more hatred, fear, and greed were included in the energy, the more disordered and ugly the water crystals would be. When he read this, Zhang Tai was suddenly enlightened. He understood the source of the fruit of redemption. Each fruit of redemption came from condensed positive awareness energy of some organisms projected onto Zhang Tai because of their appreciation for his act of saving them. As Zhang Tai had that marvelous small tree, it could gather all the positive energy and present it in the form of the fruit of redemption. Since others had no such marvelous small trees, although the same energy worked on them and could also bring great benefits to them, 
they could not see it nor know the method of extracting and converting this energy into a precious item. When he read this, Zhang Tai felt that the two gold coins were very valuable. He recalled the story of an ugly stone, told by Donder, the same thing had different values for different people. For a cart driver, if you wanted him to spend two gold coins to read some books, he would regard it as a waste of money. He wouldn't understand how the content in these books could benefit him either. In contrast, for Zhang Tai, the knowledge and information in these books performed as a pair of super clear glasses, enabling him to see farther and think of many things that he had not thought of before. The alleged cultivation could be carried out in a more special pattern. Zhang Tai was filled with pleasure. In the book Initial Exploration of Human Beings' Special Professions in Black Iron Age, Zhang Tai saw the introduction to that mysterious profession of rune master for the first time. In that age, due to studies in the development of mysterious runes, some mysterious and powerful professions had come into being, among which, rune master was the top one. What concerned rune origin and their principles, the author didn't know them either. He only knew that the application of runes was related to people's spiritual energy, which might be one of the top secrets in the world. From the time when the runes appeared, they could be categorized into two kinds. Before the catastrophe, there were many mysterious knowledges about various runes in various religions and mysterious groups in all the ancient civilized countries headed by China in the eastern continent. After the catastrophe, people discovered some runes in the earth core world and some prehistoric civilized ruins. After 1,000 years integration, the two rune systems formed the universal runes usage pattern in the world today. In this book, the author only gave a brief introduction to various knowledges and mysterious professions dealing with runes. From it, Zhang Tai could see that the author didn't know much about the runes. After reading this book, besides confirming that his binding skill was a rare kind of rune skill, Zhang Tai got nothing new. Since he read the books very fast, after finishing the previous books, he had a lot of time left. He then hurriedly read some more. As the books on the fourth floor were all relatively expensive, Zhang Tai chose to read the publications off before the catastrophe here first. That's how he ended up reading two books on the internet, which was a miracle before the catastrophe. Zhang Tai was really puzzled by that marvelous internet world. There, what Zhang Tai did in this private library was really inconceivable. With that internet, anybody could do a lot of things, obtain mountains of information, interact with other people, make friends, write letters, talk with others, entertain themselves, make money, hold conferences, find wives, pilfer, monitor and follow up that news, etc. That internet could even manipulate various machines and weapons to launch wars. That world was really too unimaginable for modern people. After reading the books on the marvelous internet, Zhang Tai searched for books about organisms, especially weird animals. In a book, Animals Galaxy, when Zhang Tai saw the introduction about some earthworms on a colorful photo, he was shocked as if struck by a lightning bolt. His body started to quiver all over. The paragraph of words and the photo finally cleared up his inspiration that had flashed across his mind last night like a light that broke the darkness. Earthworms, as trivial annelids, had strong vitality. They could grow new parts no matter how severe their injuries were, even if they were slashed into several fragments. Because of this strong vitality property, small earthworms became one of the most powerful organisms in this galaxy. Compared to the earthworm's super strong recovery ability, Zhang Tai's wounds were trivial. Zhang Tai finally caught that inspiration that had flashed across his mind. He ate his supper in the library too. Not until the place was going to be closed did Zhang Tai leave this private library. After that, he stopped a horse taxi and told the cart driver to drive him to a neighboring cheap adult's clothing shop. After buying several sets of average clothes for changing, Zhang Tai returned to his rental estate. When he came back, Zhang Tai took out his pocket watch to check the time. It was already later than 10 p.m. Mr. and Mrs. Green on the first floor and the young couple on the second floor had long fallen asleep. With common fluorite lamps hanging above the passageway, it was neither too dark nor too bright. In order not to wake them up with his footsteps, Zhang Tai stealthily moved upstairs with many bags of clothes, big and small. The room on the third floor was also dark, but Zhang Tai didn't pay much attention to it. However, when he came to the fourth floor, he saw a person pulling his door handle, trying to use the key in her hand to insert into the lock, yet continuing to fail. Chapter 223 Female Tenant and Earthworms from the person's back, Zhang Tai realized that it was a woman as she wore a pair of high-heeled shoes and a short skirt, the bottom of which reached her knees. She seemed drunk. She kept swaying right and left as she tried to pull the door handle. Hmm, it's so strange, how can this lock have so, many holes, which one is real, are you cheating me too? The woman murmured as if in sleep. At the same time, she repetitively attempted to insert the key into the lock, yet failed again and again. Standing behind that woman, Zhang Tai fixed his eyes on her. 
After confirming that this was not a trap, he finally walked close to her and patted her shoulder. The woman slowly turned back. She was a thirty-odd mature woman with wavy maroon hair. With a fair face, she would have been very enchanting, but her face was all red from drinking too much. Because she wore a pair of high-heeled shoes, when the woman turned back, she was even a bit taller than Zhang Tai. Lady, this is my residence. I think you've come to the wrong place. You must live downstairs. Zhang Tai tried to behave like a gentleman. Even you, a kid, is also trying to cheat me? The woman lowered her head and watched Zhang Tai with drunk eyes before starting to cry. Hearing the woman's drunk words, Zhang Tai was really startled. The moment he took out his key, ready to say something more, he did not expect that the woman would quiver as she bent in her waist and made a sound, woo. At the same time, she covered her mouth with his hand. When Zhang Tai felt that something was not right, the woman had already vomited something wet onto him, splattering most of his shirt. After that, the woman felt weak and went directly to the ground where she instantly fell asleep right outside the doors of Zhang Tai's residence. Dumbfounded, Zhang Tai just stood there. He felt a bit dizzy from the wet and weird odor of drunkenness below his neck. Ah! After realizing what had happened, Zhang Tai burst into shrill shrieks. He then opened the door and rushed into the residence as soon as possible. After throwing away the paper bags, he immediately rushed into the washroom. Peeling off all the clothes, he turned on the shower head and hurriedly washed himself. Even if the cold water made him quiver all over, Zhang Tai couldn't wait a moment. He just gritted his teeth and soaked himself. After scrubbing himself clean under the shower head for ten minutes, he finally walked out of the washroom in a clean bathrobe, his mouth and face turned green. When he walked out of the washroom, Zhang Tai was still quivering all over due to coldness. But he was furious inside. After hurriedly putting on two sets of slightly warmer underwear, he opened the door once again, aiming to find the woman trouble. Unexpectedly, when he walked out, she was still lying on the floor outside. Squatting down, Zhang Tai patted her face and got no response, instead, his hands got wet with her tears. He then pushed her, but still got no response. Zhang Tai then became dumbfounded as he scratched his head, not knowing what to do. Should he just leave this woman who had vomited all over him here alone? Zhang Tai intended to ignore her, however, at the sight of her lying on the ground like this, he started to pity her. Well, I will send her downstairs. Zhang Tai's plan was not bad, however, the moment he wanted to pull the woman up, he remembered that his physical condition didn't allow him to pick that woman up. He could not even move such a heavy person by dragging her. In the end, Zhang Tai could only sigh. Squatting behind the woman, he lifted her upper body. After that, he pushed his hands below her armpits. With his hands crossed before the woman's breasts, he intended to drag her into his residence. Zhang Tai almost forgot that it was a woman instead of Huck or Snade. Although there was a layer of cloth between them, the soft and super plump touch of the woman's breasts made his heart pound. Zhang Tai hurriedly moved his hand lower and put them below her breasts, exerting his utmost effort to drag the woman beside the sofa in the parlor. Previously, he could carry half a ton of items for dozens of kilometers, but right now, he felt tired even after dragging a woman for a few steps. After getting her into the parlor and pushing hard with his hands and shoulders to place her onto the sofa, Zhang Tai was already oozing sweat all over from such a short exercise. Sitting down on the ground, he panted for a while. After that, he took off the woman's high-heeled shoes and closed the door. Deciding that the woman will not wake up anytime soon, Zhang Tai went back to the washroom to clean his military uniform which was dirted by the woman and hung it on the rack. It was almost 12 p.m. By the time Zhang Tai finished washing his clothes, when he came back to the parlor, the woman was still sleeping soundly, so soundly that she even looked like she'd lost her consciousness. Zhang Tai carefully glanced over her, at the age of about 30 years, she was plump and tall, and worse a short skirt, shirt and a black ceremonial robe. With concave and convex parts, her figure was very charming. Additionally, she had a good features. Sleeping on the sofa, the woman was filled with a mature woman's lure, especially that pair of beautiful and glamorous breasts beneath a thin shirt which were really like those of Miss Dana. Zhang Tai's heart started to pound for no reason. At this time, it was a bit cold outside. Seemingly feeling the chill in the air, the woman started to tightly hug herself around the waist. Because of this instinctive movement, she almost popped her breasts out of the collar of her shirt. Zhang Tai then took a deep breath and moved his eyes away from the woman's sexy parts. After that, he returned to his bedroom and fetched a thick blanket to cover the woman's body. A bit later, her also threw some firewood into the fireplace in the parlor. He then poured pine oil onto the firewood and lit them. After a short while, the entire parlor warmed up. Zhang Tai had no experience in looking after drunk women. After checking everything in the parlor, he felt it was okay and returned to his bedroom, closing the door of his bedroom as he was used to. 
After the whole day long torture, Zhang Tai felt tired. He threw himself onto the bed and fell asleep. The next morning, he was woken up by a shrill scream. Hearing it, Zhang Tai quickly rushed out of his bedroom. When he came to the parlor, he found the woman kneeling down on the sofa, using his blanket to cover her crotch with an expression full of fear. Who are you? Where am I? What did you do to me last night? Seeing Zhang Tai coming out, the woman instantly became nervous and asked Zhang Tai the top three questions in her head. I'm the tenant of Mr. and Mrs. Green's house of the fourth floor. This is my residence. Zhang Tai felt his teeth aching. I covered you with that blanket, so please don't respond like you've been raped. Don't cover their using my blanket as you're still wearing knickers. When you were drunk last night, you lay outside my door, even vomited on me. I dragged you inside. Don't you remember it? With a sound of ah, the woman immediately covered her mouth with her hand. She seemed to have recalled something. Although she was drunk last night, she didn't lose her memory. Putting down the blanket, she found that she was still wearing her clothes, including her knickers. The shrill scream and the movement of grabbing the blanket to cover her lower part were just an instinctive response of a woman who woke up to find herself in an unfamiliar place. Sorry, sorry, I drunk too much last night. I'm afraid that I went one more floor upstairs by mistake last night. After saying that, the woman's face blushed and she hurriedly escaped towards the door, having no face to stay here anymore. The moment she opened the door of Zhang Tai's residence, she realized that she was barefooted. With a sorry, she hurriedly ran back to the sofa and lifted her shoes before running out. The moment she ran out, she found that her handbag was still on the table beside the sofa. With another sorry, she hurriedly returned to take her handbag before leaving as fast as possible. With the third sorry, she returned and got her key from the sofa. Zhang Tai was standing in pajamas in the parlor. Without saying anything, he just watched the woman going back and forth several times with her, sorry. It was his first time seeing a beautiful and mature woman in such an embarrassed state, therefore, he found it very interesting. In the end, he couldn't take it anymore and burst out laughing. As a result, the misunderstanding due to being vomited all over by that woman last night immediately dispersed. Now that he had already gotten up, Zhang Tai didn't plan to go back to sleep again. It was his big day today. After he finished cleaning his face and teeth, he put on a set of average clothes and went out. He ate breakfast in a roadside restaurant. When he walked out of it, he saw Rabbi, who had made a silver coin yesterday, playing with several kids in a nearby garden. Zhang Tai revealed a smile as he took a silver coin from his pocket, tossing it in his hand, he walked towards them. The boy called Rabbi noticed Zhang Tai walking towards them first, as well as the silver coin in his hand. Although seeing him in different clothes, the little boy could still remember Zhang Tai's appearance. Sir, what can I do for you? Rabbi asked with his eyes fixed on Zhang Tai's shiny silver coin. A silver coin meant a great amount of money for a little boy. The other kids also ran over. With raised heads, they kept their eyes on that silver coin in Zhang Tai's hand as they forcefully swallowed their saliva. I have some questions, the one whose answer satisfies me will have the silver coin. The little boys nodded their heads repeatedly like chicks eating rice. Do you know earthworms? Everybody hurriedly nodded. Do you know where can I buy earthworms? All the little boys exchanged glances with each other while frowning their foreheads. They started to carefully think about it. Earthworms? Does anyone sell such little things? I've never heard of it before. Sir. After hesitating for a while, the little boy finally opened his mouth under the allure of the silver coin. I've not heard about anyone selling earthworms in the whole of Blaypi, but I know a place with a lot of earthworms. Where? Zhang Tai revealed an interested expression. Last time when I went to my grandma's home with my mom, I saw a lot of earthworms. As my grandma lives in a rural area, many residents there tend to raise earthworms. Someone raises earthworms. This was really a surprise for Zhang Tai. Heart pounding, he calmly asked, is that true? What do they raise them for? They raise earthworms to feed chickens and ducks. My grandma told me that chickens and ducks grow very fast and lay better eggs after they eat earthworms. Where's your grandma's home? Right in the village called Chevely beside the small town Tonicas outside the city. Here's one silver coin. Zhang Tai tossed that silver coin to that little boy who caught it with excitement. Zhang Tai had never imagined that he could be that thrilled when he heard the news that someone raised earthworms. He held inside, Earthworms of Blaypi, your savior's coming. Chapter 224, Chevely. In the north of Blaypi, Tonicas was a somewhat prosperous small town located in the suburbs. Beside it were vast, unoccupied lands. In an area of several square kilometers, there were some sparse farm villages. Zhang Tai estimated that the little boy's grandma was living in one of them. By a horse taxi, Zhang Tai came to the small town Tonicas. 
When he arrived there, the elegant four-wheeled carriage that was only suitable to be driven on flat city roads could not continue moving forward in the wild as the path here was covered with pits, which was only suitable to ox carts, which moved slowly, or directly riding a horse. After paying a few dozens of copper coins, Zhang Tai got off the carriage at the small town Tonica's. He first inquired about the location of Chevly from someone in the small town, then walked directly towards it as it was only two to three kilometers away from where he was now. People in Blapii were honest and kind, additionally, Zhang Tai had his first lieutenant officer's certificate in his pocket. He was not afraid of troubles even moving alone. The surrounding farming land was verdant and vigorous. Many farmers were working in their fields. At this time, the farmers in the farming areas surrounding Blapii had just finished sowing autumn wheat. With wheat seeds, they could produce beer. Therefore, sowing wheat seeds became a great event in Blapii. By next summer, when they had to reap them, the people here would hold a grand wheat reaping festival. Zhang Tai had heard from the driver that in order to celebrate the good harvest of the past year and that the wheat seeds were sowed, the beer festival, the most boisterous festival in Blapii every year, would be held next month. In it, all the girls in Blapii would present the beer which was brewed by them. The single girls who could brew the best beer would be the stars pursued by all the lads in the city. In the eyes of all men in Blapii, it was the happiest thing to marry such an excellent girl. Zhang Tai kept walking on the path as he enjoyed the surrounding landscape. At the same time, he was considering all the details of saving those earthworms. This was the first but would not be the last deal that'll require him to set free earthworms. In order to make the fruit of redemption ripen and his body recover as soon as possible, Zhang Tai was well prepared to keep doing this for a long term. A person from another place suddenly wishing to buy earthworms that were usually taken as fodder for chickens and ducks, this would arise other suspicions in any place. If he did not want to become their focus and be held back, he had better find a proper reason to persuade them. Should he tell them that it was the secret to cure a disease in the East? He was afraid that everybody then would take him for a lunatic. What about other excuses then that would make others not to be curious about why he constantly set earthworms free? Zhang Tai recalled Guardian God School which was a school that worshipped Mother Nature. The doctrine of this school included caring for everything of the Mother Nature's and letting her recover balance. The worshippers of that school loved flowers and grasses, of course, they also loved small animals. He might be able to use this point. Grandma Teresa had told him that some believers of this school truly had set free some animals that were locked up, enslaved, or going to be killed. Maybe I have to launch the cave barbarian survival mode once again this time, Zhang Tai mumbled inside. After walking on the path beside a field for about one kilometer, creaks of wheels rotating around the axles drifted into Zhang Tai's ears. He looked back and saw an ox cart slowly driving towards him, carrying half a cart of dried wheat straws. The driver of the ox cart was a sixty-odd man in a grass hat and coarse white linen clothes. Because the path beside the field was very narrow, at the sight of the ox cart driving here, Zhang Tai hurriedly stood aside, giving way. Lad, where are you going? The old man asked enthusiastically, seeing Zhang Tai walking alone. Chevly. Ho ho, if you like, get on the cart, I'm going to Chevly too. The old man then stopped the ox. Giving a smile, Zhang Tai climbed onto the ox cart and sat on the pile of wheat straws. Together with the old man, he headed for Chevly. Lad, you don't look like a resident of Chevly, what are you going there for, friends or relatives? The old man asked. Hmm, I've just been in Blapii for a short time. I was told many families in Chevly were raising earthworms. Therefore, I want to have a look there. Realizing that the old man might be a local resident, Zhang Tai immediately launched his cave barbarian survival mode. Earthworms? Why, the old man asked out of curiosity. Shouldn't they be interesting only to the chickens and ducks? The biggest function of earthworms is not animals' fodder. Zhang Tai revealed a pious and innocent expression. If I set them free in a wild field, they could make the soil more fertile when the spring arrives. Benefiting from this, the land will be more vigorous and everything will flourish. Those trivial organisms are the gifts from Gaia, the mother of land. As he heard Zhang Tai's explanation, amazement flashed across the old man's face. He then glanced over him once again. Are you a believer of Guardian God School? Yes, I lived in Black Hot City before where I made contact with the Guardian God School. I'm a pious believer of the Guardian God School. Zhang Tai revealed a smile. The old man then hesitated for a while. There are truly many people raising earthworms in Chevly Village and its surrounding villages. You're right. However, it might be very difficult to persuade them to gift their earthworms to you because of what you say, but you should go and try. Maybe someone really would like to do that. Of course I will not let others gift their earthworms to me for nothing. No matter what, the earthworms were their private properties. Therefore, I plan to buy the earthworms that they raised before setting them free. Buy them, you mean you want to buy the useless organisms? 
the old man became even more startled. Of course, even if I'm a pious believer of the guardian god school, none of the doctrines tell us to plunder others' properties or support ourselves by letting others suffer from a loss for a right thing. Hearing Zhang Tai's words, after several seconds, the old man felt a bit a bit shameful as he asked Zhang Tai in a low voice, Um, if you want to buy, how much do you want? I raise a pond of earthworms too. Zhang Tai had not imagined that he could meet an earthworm razor in such a short time. It was really as lucky as having a pillow whenever you want to have a sleep. How much do you feel I should pay for the earthworms they raise there? Zhang Tai asked the old man. If you can pay twenty. No, only eighteen silver coins for a pond of earthworms, I guess most people will want to let you have those useless organisms. The old man's face slightly blushed as he felt uncomfortable about bargaining with a kind young man for those little things that nobody would buy at all before. He's really an adorable old man. Zhang Tai smiled and sighed. Then I will pay you twenty-one silver coins for one pond of earthworms. Zhang Tai looked solemn and merciful. As long as I can send these adorable little things back to Gaia, the mother of land, and enable this land to be more vigorous, I won't mind spending a bit more. Hearing Zhang Tai's words, the old man became even more bashful. The ox cart kept rocking on the path as it drove forward. After leaving the path, the road became a bit broader so two ox carts could pass at the same time. However, the road situation was still not good. Sitting on the ox cart, Zhang Tai chatted with the old man and gradually learned many new things. The old man was named Harley, a local farmer of Chevley. Many people in the village were truly raising earthworms, even many families in the surrounding villages were raising earthworms too. People raised them here for two reasons, first, it was convenient to raise earthworms, second, if earthworms were used as fodder for chickens and ducks, they could save a lot of grains. After rocking for over ten minutes, Zhang Tai finally arrived at Chevley village, which only included more than a hundred households. Few outsiders would visit this small village normally. Especially, people like Zhang Tai, who was a Chinese youth. Sitting on the ox cart, once he entered the village together with Harley, he had caught many people's attention. Hey, Harley, who's that Chinese youth sitting on your cart? Is he Hannah's man? Someone started to ask standing beside the road. Go away. Harley became impatient as he wove his whip. He didn't explain what Zhang Tai was here for at all. When there were fewer people around them, he became nervous as he turned back and said, Um, my earthworms. Don't worry, I will definitely buy your earthworms before considering others. After working in the grocery store for several years, Zhang Tai owned a pair of sharp eyes. Certainly he knew what Harley was concerned about. Although Blapi's people were simple and honest, they were still not hostile to money. Especially in rural areas, like in other such places, besides selling some grains in harvest seasons, people normally would have few chances to make extra money. Zhang Tai soon caught sight of the place where Harley raised his earthworms. It was a small pond built of bricks and cement which was deeper than 30 centimeters, while covering 7 to 8 square meters. The small pond was surrounded by hedges in case chickens and ducks came inside to eat them. It was covered with straws to prevent sunshine from reaching it as well beneath the straws were a pile of cow and fowl dung, duck feces, and soil. This was how people raised earthworms. After piling up the dung of livestock together with wastes and covering them with straws, they didn't need to care about the fodder for chickens and ducks anymore. Zhang Tai knew that his last hope and the holy miracle of redemption lay in the dirty dung and wastes. For the first time, Zhang Tai was filled with awe with the Creator's arrangement for each life. Chapter 225, Setting Free Earthworms Who's he, Grandpa? When Zhang Tai and Harley were looking at that pile of dung and soil beside that earthworm pond, a maiden came towards them from the grassland behind Harley's house with a milk jug in her hand. With sleeves rolled up, she wore a white shirt with patterns on it and a pale blue skirt. Outside the shirt was a blue skin-tight vest which covered her skirt with an apron. This was the favorite dressing of peasant maidens in Blapii and the Andaman Alliance as a whole. The maiden was 18 to 19 years old and looked a bit older than Zhang Tai. She was very beautiful. With a string binding her hair, she had two golden braids hanging on either side, while her red face and shiny eyes were filled with vitality. Additionally, her skin-tight vest outlined the elegant curves of her waist and breasts. These rural maidens' bodies were even more amazing than of those girls of Rose Association due to better development. In addition, they were exceptionally beautiful. Only with one glance at this maiden, Zhang Tai had become slightly ashamed. The maiden carrying a milk jug looked both energetic and capable. She was simply a heifer. Coincidentally, all the heifers were extremely attractive to Zhang Tai. Hannah, this is our guest, he's here to buy our earthworms. Harley explained. By earthworms? Having just milked the cow, Hannah carried a milk jug as she walked towards them. At the same time, she peered at Zhang Tai several times before said straightforwardly, you must be a liar. Of course not. I've negotiated with your grandpa, cash on delivery. 
Zhang Tai smiled while peering at that girl's breasts that were G-cup size, which were even bigger than those of Sharapova and Alice. Based on his sharp eyes formed by the girls of the Rose Association, Zhang Tai instantly judged the size of Hannah's breasts. That's really a heifer. Zhang Tai silently swallowed his saliva. Are you that rich? Why do you buy these things that nobody would buy at all? Dream and belief cannot be measured by money. In the cave barbarian survival mode, Zhang Tai's words and behavior were so perfect that nobody could find any fault with him at all. The maiden glanced at Zhang Tai with a pair of dubious eyes. Hannah, this young man is a pious believer of Guardian God School. Standing nearby, Old Harley repeated what Zhang Tai had fabricated to him. This lie was truly believable. After all, these small things that existed everywhere, almost no other idiot would buy them at all. Hearing Old Harley's explanation, Hannah's eyes revealed a bit of interest towards Zhang Tai. At the sight of his granddaughter being interested in this black-haired lad, Old Harley who had experienced love affairs hurriedly assigned Hannah with a job. Hannah, have you milked the cows just now? Hurry up and take the milk to the kitchen to filter it before boiling. If it keeps still too long, it will not be yummy. Old Harley didn't want to sell his granddaughter at the price of only several silver coins. Before being f asterisk ked by a man, the female had to be interested in that man at the beginning. Nobody knew how long an outsider like Zhang Tai would stay in Blapi. Therefore, Old Harley didn't want to assume the risk of allowing the lad to make Hannah pregnant before fleeing. Even though this lad was a pious believer of Guardian God School, there was no doctrine there on forbidding a believer to make a female pregnant. Hannah then carried the milk jug away while turning back on her way to cast another glance at Zhang Tai. Seeing Hannah going away, Zhang Tai continued to talk about earthworms with Old Harley. Old Harley moved away a part of the straws covering the pile of dung and soil, then thrust a small wooden stick inside to open the dung. Zhang Tai then saw more than ten earthworms twisting under the dung, hurriedly worming and shrinking into the soil. These earthworms were all fat and strong. If Zhang Tai didn't came here to buy them, they were destined to become the fodder of chickens and ducks. How many earthworms are in this pit? Zhang Tai asked Old Harley. At least one hundred thousand. No one can count them. To tell the truth, this organism reproduces very fast, having a very strong reproductive capability. Each earthworm will lay eggs three-four times a year, giving birth to dozens of babies each time. So one earthworm can give birth to more than one hundred new ones a year. I usually take some from here as fodder for chickens and ducks. As long as you add some wastes and cow dung, they will give birth to some babies in a few days. So I've never seen their numbers decrease. Do you have a vehicle? I cannot carry a pond of earthworms and dung into the wild and bury them just by hand. Of course I have, I have a wooden handcart used for carrying cow dung and a spade. If you cannot do it by yourself, I can find two helpers for you if you can pay me another two silver coins a day. Fine. After thinking for a while, Zhang Tai directly pulled out his purse and counted out twenty-five silver coins before handing them to old Harley. Twenty-one silver coins are for earthworms, one silver coin is for renting your handcart and tools while the remaining three are for the helper you'll find for me from the village. Taking the silver coins, old Harley instantly revealed a smile. After a short while, a human-driven wooden handcart smelling of cow dung, two spades, and a strong male youth appeared before Zhang Tai. That male youth was old Harley's grandson, Hannah's elder brother. He hadn't imagined that the pond of earthworms was worth twenty-one silver coins. Additionally he could also make three silver coins today. Even lending two spades would bring them a silver coin. Hannah's elder brother and the other family members of old Harley became very happy. Generous people would gain a warm welcome everywhere they went. The moment the tools were brought over, Zhang Tai and Hannah's elder brother started to work hard. They firstly moved away the straws off the earthworms, after that, they directly spaded the earthworms out of the pond and moved them onto the wooden handcart. Zhang Tai was filled with excitement. He had never imagined it would go so smooth today. With his physical condition much worse than before, Zhang Tai only worked for less than three minutes before starting to pant heavily. Supporting himself on the handle of his spade, Zhang Tai took a rest nearby while Hannah's elder brother became more and more energetic. He he, you'd better take a rest. I can finish this work alone. Seeing Zhang Tai's weak look, Hannah's elder brother burst out laughing as he moved his spade faster. In only a few minutes, the wooden handcart was already fully loaded with cow dung and soil. It at least contained 10,000 earthworms. Seeing those earthworms rolling on the vehicle, Zhang Tai hurriedly covered it with some straws to avoid the adorable earthworms from being shined on by the sun. Where are we heading to? Hannah's elder brother asked Zhang Tai. I'm not familiar with the neighboring topography. If you feel that there's a suitable place somewhere around for these earthworms to settle down, you can guide me there. Finally, Hannah's elder brother guided Zhang Tai to a riverside south of Shevli village. The river was dug a couple of years ago. Below its banks was silt which had been carried out of the river. 
Many trees were planted on the riverside. A bit farther away from there were vegetable fields. Many people piled the rotten vegetable leaves onto a concave land near the river, which had been covered with weeds. Zhang Tai decided that the environment here was really suitable for the earthworms to survive. He opened the soil near the concave land using his spade and checked it. He found that the soil here was soft and had many earthworms. The moment Zhang Tai broke the earth, the earthworms had tried to hide into the soil from the sun's light. For the earthworms who lived in the small pond before and were destined to be fodder for chickens and ducks, this place, although not being paradise, was almost like a Shangri-La. Now that Zhang Tai was determined to set free his earthworms here, the following steps were easy. He worked together with Hannah's elder brother as they dug out a pit of 30 to 40 centimeters in depth. They then moved the dung along with earthworms into the pit with their spades. After that, they covered some fine land on it, making it ready for the earthworms to settle down here. The process of setting free these earthworms was simply an engineering work. It took Zhang Tai and Hannah's elder brother almost a whole day only to clean 95% of all the earthworms and dung from that pond at Old Harley's house. Finally, only a part of dung and soil the size of a dustpan in that pond which covered 7 to 8 square meters was left. According to Old Harley's explanation, they were left to reproduce. Only by adding some dung and wastes, the pond would be fully filled with earthworms again in less than a year. For the whole day, Zhang Tai and Hannah's elder brother pulled the wooden handcart and walked to and fro many times. At the same time, the message that Zhang Tai was buying earthworms also spread across the village. As a result, all the farmers in Shevli knew that a pious believer of Guardian God School came to Shevli, who wanted to set free their raised earthworms into the wild. This person was not only pious, but also generous as he paid 25 silver coins to old Harley's family today. It was admirable for local residents to make so much extra money in one day. How could those earthworms value so much? Because of his generosity, Zhang Tai received a passionate treatment in old Harley's house. He enjoyed a free lunch and a free supper. But because he was in too much hurry to go back to check his fruit of redemption, after supper, he didn't stay in old Harley's home anymore, instead, he directly returned to his residence. Do you want more earthworms? I raised some too. My earthworm pond is larger than that of old Harley. It contains more earthworms than his as well. I only want 20 silver coins for all of them. I only need 19 silver coins. Seeing people arguing around him, Zhang Tai felt dizzy and shouted out loudly standing on the ox cart, be quiet. Everybody then became quiet with their eyes fixed on Zhang Tai, who was standing on the ox cart. As Zhang Tai was a military officer of the Iron Blood camp, since he left the battlefield, he had a special, firm personality, which could definitely help him control the situation at this moment. Please go back home, I will return in a couple of days. I want all your earthworms. Don't worry, I will come back to buy earthworms one house by another. I only buy those raised by you in your own pond. For the wild ones, I don't buy them. The price of your earthworms will be the same as that in old Harley's house today. Hearing Zhang Tai's explanation, everybody left satisfied. Standing outside her home, Hannah watched Zhang Tai standing on the ox cart, persuading all the other people to leave with only a couple of sentences. Her eyes then became shiny. Zhang Tai didn't know that as a handsome Chinese youth, who was utterly different from those muscled youths in the village, in many girls' eyes in this village, he was filled with an exceptionally exotic aura. What he did in this normal village aroused many girls' interests, like Hannah's. When Zhang Tai returned to his rental estate, it was already dark outside. The sound of a violin still drifted from Mr. and Mrs. Green's residence on the first floor, the noise of the kid still came from the residence of the young couple on the second floor, and it was still empty on the third floor, while on the door of Zhang Tai's residence was a taped paper. I'm sorry for what happened last night. Thanks for your care. If I contaminated your clothes, you can take them downstairs and put outside my door. I will help you wash them all, Linda. It seems that woman is called Linda, and she came here to find me. Zhang Tai had almost forgotten this trivial thing. As she was just drunk, it was not necessary for him to be angry about her. Revealing a smile, he tore off the paper as he opened the door and walked inside. At this moment, Zhang Tai's heart had long been pounded like boiling water. He was just trying to recover his composure. Patience is virtue, he warned himself once again. Because he had sweated too much today and the work today was not clean, Zhang Tai was still full of smell of dung and wastes. Before he entered the castle of Black Iron, he spent ten minutes taking a bath and changing his clothes. Handsome and magnificent castle lord, welcome to the castle of Black Iron. When this line of words slowly disappeared, Zhang Tai took a deep breath as he walked towards the small tree. The small tree or the true karma rule didn't let Zhang Tai down. At this moment, on the twig in the middle of the small tree were quietly hanging two fruits. The two fruits were both fruits of redemption, one was pale green while the other had become pink. 
They were like two peaches, one was already ripe while the other was not ripe yet. The pale green one was Golden Wang's strength, which was not ripe yet. Zhang Tai didn't pay much attention to it, instead, he directly stretched out his hand towards the pink heart-shaped peach. Fruit of redemption, from earthworm's appreciation, has become ripe. Usage, pick and directly eat it. Notice, the fruit cannot be taken out of the castle of black iron. After twelve hours of having been picked off the tree, its energy and vitality will gradually decline. This fruit can recover your wounds by 1.3%. With more than 20 silver coins, Zhang Tai could improve his physical condition by 1.3%. After reading this, he became dumbfounded, then burst out laughing loudly. At this moment, Zhang Tai understood that money was very important, though it was not the standard to measure the value of everything. Without those earthworms, no matter how much he spent, he could not recover his body at all. Maybe similar to the humankind before the catastrophe, people in this age were used to measuring the value of everything with money. He set free at least 70,000 to 80,000 earthworms today. Although those lives were only worth some silver coins in someone's eyes, they didn't know that all the lives were the manifestation of the Creator, whose value could not be measured by money. In the eyes of the Creator, a live grass and a small earthworm might be more valuable than a magnificent palace. Should the alleged wealth of a person be measured by the eyes of humankind or the eyes of the Creator? In other words, a real rich man should be rich from the perspectives of both humankind and the Creator. The above enlightenment flashed across Zhang Tai's mind. The heart-shaped fruit of redemption brought people an exotic sense that made their pores expanded due to excitement. After picking the fruit and eating it, it started to worm through Zhang Tai's body by creeping like an earthworm. Zhang Tai could obviously feel that the places where he felt uncomfortable before became comfortable after the warm flow crept through. It was too nice eating this fruit. During the whole process, Zhang Tai felt like numerous small hands were giving him a massage both inside and outside. He was so immersed in that process that even after the fruit's effect had long ended, he was still sitting on the ground and enjoying its memory for a long time before standing up. After getting up, Zhang Tai made some movements to feel his current physical condition. Although it only recovered 1.3%, Zhang Tai could still feel a bit better than before. Because his physical condition was very bad, even with 1.3% fess recovery, he could still feel a very obvious improvement. As long as he could insist on setting free earthworms, he would fully recover to a normal person in several months. Zhang Tai let out a long breath inside. At this speed, he knew that he would fully recover, as if by a miracle, in only three to four months. Perhaps when he had fully recovered, the reconditioning of the Iron Blood Camp of No. 39 Division would have not completed yet. After all, the loss for the Iron Blood Camp was really big this time. If he could fully recover, would he go back to the Iron Blood Camp? When he thought of this question, Zhang Tai became hesitant inside. He knew that if he just went back like nothing had happened after being judged a disabled man by a lot of doctors due to his terrifying experience, he would then be truly well-known in the entire Iron Horn Army. He was afraid that if he did that, many people would start to doubt his lie about being struck by a lightning bolt. No matter how sharp a man with the post-lightning stroke savant syndrome was, he could not do something like that. Iron Horn Army was not Black Hot City. If he aroused someone's suspicions, Zhang Tai wasn't sure whether he could keep the secret of the castle of Black Iron. Zhang Tai was really puzzled by this question. However, only after several seconds, he pushed it out of his mind. No matter what, whether he would recover or the Iron Blood Camp would finish its reconditioning and reorganization, it would be at least three to four months later. He didn't need to think about this question now. Thinking this way, Zhang Tai relaxed. Because he had enough free time tonight, he firstly cultivated in the castle of Black Iron for a while, then continued to produce two more binding chains using his spiritual energy. After that, he practiced mental arithmetic by two abacuses at the same time so as to recover his spiritual energy a bit. After doing all the above things, he felt very satisfied and fell asleep. Later on, Zhang Tai became the most popular person in the whole Shevli village. Chapter 226 The Most Popular Person in Shevli on an empty land outside the Shevli village were stacks of dried wheat straw. Many households' wheat straw stacks were piled here in bundles. They were like rolling mountains. Additionally, the sparse wheat straws covering the land looked like a thick carpet. Even if people jumped off from the top of the stacks, they would not get hurt. Therefore, this place also became the most natural and enjoyable children's playground in the Shevli village as a whole. In order to hide themselves well when they played the hide-and-seek game, the kids had emptied the bottoms of many tall wheat straw stacks. After blocking the entrances of the caves in them, one could sleep inside overnight. The insides of the wheat straw stacks were ventilated, warm, and very soft. The place where the wheat straws were piled was really a mini-maze in Shevli village. Certainly, not only kids liked it there, even Zhang Tai liked it too. 
At this moment, the sky was covered with stars. The kids and Shevly had just had supper after being called back home by their parents before dusk. They were preparing to play in groups outside. In the period between the kids being called back home to eat supper and them returning to play outside, the whole wheat straw drying field was vacant. During this over 2H period, people could do a lot of things here. From the day before yesterday, Zhang Tai had fallen in love with this place. After setting free earthworms the first time, he passed by this wheat straw's drying field. He saw Hannah with her two golden braids on his way. She was hiding behind a wheat straw stack, peeking out only with her head and silently waving her hand towards him, who was walking after her elder brother and another helper in the village. As the work today had been finished, Zhang Tai told the two helpers to go back first. He then found an excuse to take a rest around here. When they were far away, Zhang Tai stealthily moved to that wheat straw stack where Hannah was hiding. Pulling Zhang Tai's hand, she said nothing but walked around the field in circles before guiding him in front of a wheat straw stack. She then pulled away a bundle of wheat straws from below, revealing a hole. Pulling her skirt up, she gave him a smile as she lowered her body and crawled inside, followed by Zhang Tai. The moment Zhang Tai came in, Hannah's hot lips pasted onto his while her hands reached for his leather belt. As a man, of course, Zhang Tai didn't wait at all. The following thing was needless to mention. One lad and one maiden, staying alone, soon wrestled with each other. It was Zhang Tai's first time doing this in a wheat straw stack. He felt it very stimulative and full of fun. From that day onward, Zhang Tai also started to like these wheat straw stacks. At each desk, Hannah would wait for him there. After he finished work each day, Zhang Tai would find an excuse to meet Hannah here like what he did that day. Zhang Tai couldn't remember how many times had Hannah started her contractive spasm, but he could remember that after each time they made love, the greater part of the undid and padded apron under her body would be wet. He was really amazed when he learned that a woman's apron had such a function. Each time when Hannah started to spasm, she would make shrill shrieks unconscious lie. Therefore, each time at this moment Zhang Tai would hurriedly kiss her lips. Zhang Tai also enjoyed this sense of spasm as he felt a sense of achievement both physically and mentally. This time, Hannah's spasm lasted as long as three to four minutes. Zhang Tai didn't move this time, instead, he just lay on Hannah's body and kissed her. Sucking Hannah's tongue, he could sense the coldness on her tongue's tip. Occasionally, he would move his D asterisk CK which was in her body to make her quiver from excitement. Zhang Tai liked to see a woman losing her mind under him. Coming back from the paradise to the human world, Hannah could still feel the hardness of Zhang Tai's D asterisk CK inside her body. At this moment, she was still soft all over. She had no more strength left while the apron under her was all wet and a bit swollen. She had not experienced this crazy thing before. From the first time, she had felt that Zhang Tai was like a weird beast who grew up more and more powerful in a crazy way as days passed. Each time she felt like she was torn to pieces by him. Whenever she thought of Zhang Tai's panting after he had used the spade while working for only two minutes, she would be certain that that bad guy must be pretending at that time. Ha, huh, have you ejected it? Hannah gasped, face turning completely red. You guess? Zhang Tai gave an obscene smile while moving his D asterisk CK inside her body again, making Hannah's body quiver heavily. Ah, uh, could you stop? I know what you're waiting for. I knew it when you saw me for the first time. Don't lift my legs anymore, put them down, please, they are already sore. At this time, Hannah's skirt had been undid and been circled around her waist while her underwear were moved onto her knees. She was still wearing fine-heeled leather shoes, revealing a pair of snow-white legs. Her plump thighs were pressed by Zhang Tai to curl up close to each other. Zhang Tai then separated her legs and brought her knees against his chest. After that, Zhang Tai put down Hannah's legs. She then undid her skin-tight vest and moved it lower from her body. After that, she undid the buttons of the shirt under the vest and the front button-type corsage, exposing her huge and snow-white G-sized cup at once. Hannah pushed them using her hands and forced a deep plump A and soft ravine. After that, she cast an enchanting glance at Zhang Tai and bit his ear. Come on, you scumbag, my sister-in-law taught me yesterday. With shiny eyes, Zhang Tai then did more funny gestures. After 20 minutes, Zhang Tai was the first to walk out of the wheat straw stack with a refreshed look. Looking at the sky, he realized that they had played longer than yesterday. Like how she looked after milking the cow, this heifer was really gratified and was really good at milking. Face blushed, Hannah drilled out of the wheat straw stack too while arranging her dress. Zhang Tai then helped her to arrange her clothes and fastened the ropes on her vest. After picking the straws from the other's clothes and hair, they smealed at each other. Will you come here tomorrow? Hannah asked, staring at Zhang Tai full of affection. I have something to deal with in Blay Pi tomorrow, so I will come here the day after tomorrow. Zhang Tai explained. Even though he was the director of the No. 9 Equipment Administration of the Comprehensive Relief Branch of the Logistics Department of Ironhorn Army, 
Zhang Tai had not went over to the plant for almost two weeks, since the first day after he had left the hospital. Additionally, the war was continuing on the front line. Even if this was a leisurely position for retired officers, Zhang Tai still felt bashful being that lazy. He should go there and greet them at least. Then I will wait for you here the day after tomorrow. Great. Saying this, Zhang Tai suddenly thought of something. What gift do you want? I'll bring it back for you from Blapi. Inclining her head, Hannah thought for a moment. Bring me a packet of beer yeast then. As the beer festival will arrive in a few days, by then, each girl in the village will display the beer they brew themselves, but there didn't seem to be enough beer yeast at home, so just buy one packet for me. Okay. They then kissed before the wheat straw stack and stealthily departed from each other in different directions. Now that it was a clandestine love affair, they were both very careful. Only a few minutes after Zhang Tai left the wheat straw stack, before he walked out of the Chevely village, he encountered old Harley who was looking for Hannah. The moment he caught sight of Zhang Tai, old Harley became stunned. Zhang Tai, have you seen Hannah? No, no. Zhang Tai stammered out, unconfident like a thief. Why do you leave so late? Old Harley gazed at Zhang Tai with a dubious look. Um, I was a bit tired today, after the work, I took a rest. When I woke up, it was already somewhat late. Hannah should be in the village or with her friends. No more chit-chat, it's hard to walk in the night. I have to go back. Zhang Tai hurriedly escaped. Looking at Zhang Tai's anxious look, old Harley had a feeling of something wrong. After setting the earthworms free, Zhang Tai had lingered with Hannah for more than two hours before returning to Tanaka's town alone in the evening. After a casual supper in some hotel, he finally found a horse taxi to drive him back to the rental estate. Today, Zhang Tai came back after 11 o'clock p.m., later than usual. By now, all the people on the first and the second floor had fallen asleep. In order to not disturb them, Zhang Tai quietly moved upstairs. Linda, as I sent you back, why not invite me in to have a cup of coffee? The moment Zhang Tai moved on to the second floor, he heard the voice of a middle-aged man from the third floor. F asterisk CK, you want to drink a cup of coffee in her residence at such a late time, I think you mother asterisk Kerr want her to drink your milk. Hearing that voice, Zhang Tai immediately understood what was happening. It was very normal and had nothing to do with Zhang Tai. He only felt that the man was a bit hypocritical. No, it's a bit too late, thanks for sending me back. I'm a bit uncomfortable. See you. The woman, who lived on the third floor, obviously knew what the man was thinking about. So after a slight hesitation, she refused his wish to drink a cup of coffee. Are you uncomfortable? What's wrong? Let me see, the man asked in an anxious voice. No need, I drank too much. I'll be okay after a rest, ah. When Zhang Tai arrived at the third floor, he saw a man in tidy clothes hugging the woman who lived in the residence on the third floor in the dim stairwell. The woman was struggling in resistance grabbing that man's hand to stop him from fumbling all over her body. At the same time, she inclined her head to avoid being kissed by him as well. Hearing Zhang Tai's footsteps, the man and the woman both stopped. At the sight of him, that woman seemed to become a bit embarrassed while the man older than forty frowned. As it had nothing to do with him, Zhang Tai just pretended to ignore them. After a casual glance over them, he went directly upstairs. The man stared at Zhang Tai, but after realizing that he just lived up the stairs, he relaxed and started to fumble again. When Zhang Tai arrived at the fourth floor and prepared to open the door of his own residence, the man downstairs became more presumptuous. Ah, uh, no, let me go, if not, I'll call the police. The woman older than thirty exclaimed. Linda, I love you. Once you promise to be my woman, I can delay the debt of your distillery. The man started to gasp. Ah, uh, haven't you agreed to delay it for me at the table? The woman still struggled to get out of his grasp. It depends on your performance tonight. Don't pretend to be a goddess anymore. I know that women like you only want more benefits at the critical moment. Once you promise to be my mistress and make me comfortable on the bed later on, then, nothing is a problem. The man's voice became increasingly more anxious while the sound of their clothes moving about became louder. Do, do you know, Linda, since the first time I saw you, I wanted to crazily f asterisk ck you. At the sight of your little mouth, I wanted to make you kneel down in front of me and lick my pole. If you make me comfortable tonight, nothing is a problem later on. Besides more crazy movements, the man's words became more foul. Pa! The woman smacked the man. Soon after, her mouth was blocked by something, and she started weeping. With a sound of hua, her clothes were torn to pieces. Previously, as Zhang Tai had felt it had nothing to do with him, he planned to ignore it. However, at this moment when he inserted his key into the door, he couldn't stand it anymore. He turned and rapidly went downstairs to the third floor. When Zhang Tai arrived at the third floor, the man had already forced the woman to a corner of the stairwell. With one hand covering her mouth, he pinched her neck with his other hand. 
Part of her clothes had been torn open. Evidently, the man was going to use force to conquer her. Zhang Tai instantly rushed forward and pinched the vein on the man's neck, dragging him off from the woman's body. Being pinched in a certain location on his neck, the man immediately felt dizzy and unconscious Lai let go of the woman. After setting the earthworms free for one week, Zhang Tai had already become as healthy as a normal person and had some strength. Plus, with his rich experience in killing people on the battlefield, the man wasn't even able to resist before being thrown to the ground. He instantly became dizzy and didn't realize what had happened until ten more seconds passed. Before he could open his mouth, Zhang Tai, who had killed numerous people when he was in the Iron Blood camp, smacked him, having no wish to waste time talking to such a man. He then kept smacking the two sides of his face for more than ten times. The forty-odd man's face was soon turned into a pig head covered with blood. If I see you again, I'll chop you to pieces and feed the dogs on the street. Flustered, the man looked at Zhang Tai, who was filled with killing intent formed by killing numerous people on the battlefield. Even if he was not as sharp as before, once with a solemn face, he could still present a terrifying strength to others. The man couldn't speak anymore, so instead he just nodded. Zhang Tai then gave him a fierce kick. Piss off. The man then tumbled downstairs in a very embarrassed way. He even fell down on as it was dark there. Like a ball, he kept rolling to the second floor before escaping outside. He didn't even dare to look back. Not until the man escaped away did Zhang Tai turn back and look at the woman who was standing outside her door on the third floor, hands on her corsage that had been torn open. Are you okay? Zhang Tai mildly asked. Thank you, the woman replied in a low voice, half of her body in the shadow. Zhang Tai couldn't see clearly her expression, but the curve below her waist under the fluorite lamp was really seductive, to the point that he even wanted to commit a crime. The woman was wearing a super short skin-tight skirt with scattered small flowers and plants, under which was a pair of slim legs. Additionally, she was wearing a pair of high-heeled shoes. All this exposed her mature and sexy figure at once. No wonder that man became a beast. Zhang Tai mumbled inside. If it was him who had sent such a woman home at the midnight, he might not have been able to stop himself from being impulsive outside her door either. Have a good rest then. If he comes here to find you trouble later, just call me. After casting another glance at her, Zhang Tai went upstairs. Not until she heard Zhang Tai opening his own door and entering his residence that the woman who was curling in the shadow pulled out her key and opened her own door. On that day, because she was drunk and the fluorite lamp in the stairwell was a bit dim, after vomiting on Zhang Tai's clothes, she could not remember how he looked in a military uniform. She thought of him as a kid, but at this moment, his brutality, real strength and righteousness that were far greater than that of an average 15 to 16 youth totally subverted his image in her mind. When she thought back to that scene of her sleeping in Zhang Tai's residence and escaping from his parlor with embarrassment, as well as his taunting loud laugh as he stood wearing a night robe, the woman had a weird feline towards Zhang Tai. When he entered his residence, Zhang Tai took a bath first before entering the castle of Black Iron. After eating today's fruit of redemption from Earthworm's appreciation, his total recovery was 15.8%, a bit more than yesterday. Now, Zhang Tai had finally reached the healthy state of a 15-old youth he was before he gained the castle of Black Iron. Although he had no great strength, thankfully, he was a normal person at least. The system has detected that the physical condition of Castle Lord has recovered to the minimal physical condition that can bear the impact of trouble reappearance fruit. Therefore, the trouble reappearance fruit is available now. This news was definitely the best gift Zhang Tai had received today. He burst out into loud laughter. After that, he cultivated his spiritual energy in the castle of Black Iron for a while and formed another, binding chain. He then felt a bit tired, so he went back to his bedroom and had a good night's sleep. At midnight, Zhang Tai was woken up by a loud sound that could shock the entire Blay P.I. He hurriedly came to the parlor and pulled away the curtain, catching sight of a place in the south of Blay P.I. Over there, flames were leaping to the sky, half of it already dyed red. Zhang Tai could barely remember that that place was an important logistics warehouse of Blay P.I. Later on, a shrill air defense alert started to reverberate across Blay P.I. Dumbfounded, Zhang Tai gazed at the flaring flames in the horizon and that looming airship above the flames. A question flashed across his mind, was that loud sound the legendary explosion? Ever since he was born, this was Zhang Tai's first time seeing an explosion. Chapter 227, The Fall of the Curtain of Science It was said that it was very simple to make explosives before the catastrophe. In that age, people had grasped a lot of methods to explode substances. They could also make bombs with terrifying power. With only one bomb, they could even destroy a city, killing millions of people. Many people could even easily make a lot of explosives at home. With the arrival of the catastrophe and the god star, every rule in the world had changed, 
which caused people to lose their ability to make explosives for hundreds years after the catastrophe. This lasted until the time before the Second Holy War between humans and demons, when during an excavation of underground relics and under the enlightenment of Far East civilization, people gained this ability once again. It was said that this ability was related to crystals. However, compared to before the catastrophe, the number of people who were able to make explosives was even less than the number of rare animals in the zoo before the catastrophe. Many people were still attempting to find the mystery of why the substances that could explode before the catastrophe failed to do so after it. They posed many explanations, the most famous two being, first, the string change theory based on the opinion of the string science of universe, second, the God's particles theory based on the God star. According to the string change school, the catastrophe and the God star changed the string state of materials, the basic constitution state of substances in this galaxy. As a result, many basic rules in this galaxy changed. This opinion had a lot of supporters. The string theory was still disputable before the catastrophe. Although the opinion of string change theory seemed able to explain everything after the catastrophe, it was meaningless. Because average people could not understand it. Besides the string theory, there was a theory about mysterious particles brought by the God star. This theory also had a lot of basis and supporters. According to the God's particles theory, the God star brought a kind of mysterious particles. After they were cast in this galaxy, every rule in this galaxy changed. Besides always mentioning people's successful researches on the macro world before the catastrophe, people who supported the God's particles theory favored the one vacant chair theory, in a classroom with 50 chairs, even if 49 of them were occupied, with one chair vacant, all the other 49 people could change their locations for free. Because no matter how they changed, there was always a vacant chair. This was the scientific rule worshipped by the world before the catastrophe. The foundation of this rule was that vacant chair in the classroom. With that vacant seat, everybody in the classroom could remain mobile and active to a certain degree. However, after the catastrophe, the God star occupied the vacant chair in the classroom. As a result, the mobility and activeness that was in the classroom suddenly disappeared. Although there was no vacant chair anymore, with the brilliant rays of the God star, the people in the classroom could now see the outside world. They started to realize the limit of their original living space. At the same time, they also began to enjoy the colors of the outside space where they thought was nothing but darkness before. This was the most popular opinion. The science teacher at Zhang Tai School was also a supporter of this opinion. According to the current study and understanding of the human world before the catastrophe, humans before the catastrophe had already collapsed into an alleged scientific trap under the seduction of the demons and extreme self-consciousness. In that age, people blindly thought that the science they grasped was the only and ultimate truth in this universe. However, the truth was that people's crazy worshipping of science was just a game of blind people touching the elephant, one, that most people played under the guidance of others. The elephant was the overall existence and truth of the universe while human science was not even a finger in front of the overall existence and truth. Even if it was a finger, the moment it touched the skin of the elephant, people would mistake the universe as a rough and flexible wall that could confine people's living space. The largest myth of science was rooted in the limits of people's senses and awareness. What people could see, hear, smell and touch was actually an existing form of a substance within the range of a narrow frequency of visible light. The frequency within that range that people could perceive was only a bowl of water in the water vat or a key on the entire keyboard of the piano. When the hand of science pressed that key, people heard the sound and took that single key as the whole piano. The alleged science was just an extension of people's five senses and awareness in exploring the universe. The limits of people's five senses and awareness led to the limits of science. At the beginning, the science that people grasped truly had played a positive role in their development. But after that, especially in the hundreds of years before the catastrophe, the alleged science became the shackles of confinement and the tool that demons used to destroy human beings. At that time, the science spokesman told people that humans were the only smart life on this galaxy, even the entire universe. At that time, the science spokesman told people that the galaxy was solid. Besides magma and rocks, nothing was inside. At that time, the science spokesman told people that the full potential of people was to run faster, jump higher, and be more intelligent. At that time, the science spokesman told people that the ancestors of human beings was a kind of carbon-based protein existence formed by a lightning bolt hitting water. After many years' evolution, the carbon-based protein finally became a kind of single-cell organism. After another long period of evolution, it became another kind of living being. In the end, apes became human beings. Human beings had no history at all. As long as you walked around a zoo and a geological fossil museum, you would understand it. 
Oh, at that time, science told people that above 98% of human genes were wastes. People trusted it. As a result, demons hiding among them became very happy. At that time, humans were actually a lamb led to slaughter, its eyes covered with a black cloth by the demons. Humans were killed by demons in great batches in various ways, however, they didn't know who did it. In the human world, when unprecedented progress was made in science, the biggest role of science was actually to weld the cage that contained human beings more closely, to tighten people with ropes, to kill them in more terrifying ways, and to bring forth something new from the old to play the people. Many people before the catastrophe were inserted with chips controlled by the demons the moment they were born. They were then tightly monitored by the demons. In the name of injecting vaccines, some viruses would be injected in their bodies so as to completely destroy people's immune system. Those viruses could even restrict people's potential, as well as further improving and liberating people's DNA. After that, everybody was thrown into that terrifying world full of terrors, enmity, and violence designed by the demons. In that world, people were killed in wars, chaos, environment that people had damaged and polluted. Besides, people were killed by the food that had been renovated by demons, the animosity, the gap between the rich and the poor and the oppressive system. Everybody was serving a set of terrifying orders that would finally eliminate all the people knowingly or not. Many people in this age believed that the god star had set people free from that terrifying, internecine trap. Most of people attributed all the changes that happened in this world to that god star, expecting to find the answer to explain everything in it. The arrival of the god star indicated that the human sciences curtain fell and the Black Iron Age started. Therefore, the god's particles theory became more influential. Besides the above two explanations, Zhang Tai had heard another explanation from Donder, starting from the catastrophe and the arrival of the god star, the galaxy in which the people were living in had entered another time and space density in the position of the universe. In a different time and space density, all the substances had different properties and performance. This theory of different time and space had already existed before the catastrophe, spread around in some mysterious associations. It was the most aged theory. Based on Zhang Tai's knowledge and intelligence, he could not identify whether these theories were true or not. He only focused on the facts before him. These theories and hypotheses only stated one fact, in this age when the curtain of science had fallen, substances that could explode and the producers of explosives were both jewels. Average people could not even have a chance to see a single explosion in their whole lives. Even in wars, explosives were rarely used. It didn't mean that they were useless, but the opposite, too useful. Few people could afford them. Using explosives in wars was akin to hitting people with gold bricks. Without above ten times return, nobody would like to hit people with gold bricks. Explosives came with thunder-like loud sounds and flames, which were two important features in identifying explosions, or so Donder had said. Because Zhang Tai had not seen explosions before, he was not absolutely sure whether it was an explosion or not. He only felt that the flames in the sky outside the window were very amazing at the midnight. After that loud sound, the whole Blapii turned chaotic for the rest of the night. The next day, when Zhang Tai prepared to leave his residence in his first lieutenant's military uniform, he found the streets in Blapii covered with soldiers in dark red military uniforms. They were interrogating passers-by. The atmosphere in the whole Blapii became ten times more intense compared to yesterday. Since Blapii was only over 100 kilometers or one hour's drive away from the front line, the smoke and destruction due to gradually escalating battles between the two countries unavoidably extended toward it from the front line after two weeks since Zhang Tai had come to the logistics department. The tranquility of Blapii was broken. The troubled times were coming. Where was peaceful? A sense of crisis rose in Zhang Tai's heart once again. One, in ancient China, a king told a chancellor to present an elephant to a group of blind people. The blind people then touched the elephant with their hands. One touched its ear and said it was a winnowing fan, one touched its head and said it was a rock, one touched its nose and said it was a round wooden bar, bigger on one end and smaller on the other end, which was used to grind rice in ancient China, one touched its foot and said it was a mortar, one touched its back and said it was a bed, one touched its abdomen and said it was a jar, one touched its tail and said it was a rope. Chapter 228, Alchemists and Secret Police. It's so nice to know you're all right, sir. Whether it was true or not, when Zhang Tai caught sight of Pai Ping's slippery expression, he really felt warm inside and not hostile toward him. Zhang Tai was very good at making contact with these kind of people when he was in Donder's grocery store, so when he saw 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping, he was not modest to him either. He instead hooked his hand around 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping's shoulders and brought him into his office. Since he became the director of the logistics administration two weeks ago, it was Zhang Tai's first time entering the director's office of this vehicle maintenance plant. 
The office featured a military style, a desk, a sofa, a filing cabinet, some drawings on the structures of steam-driven engines and vehicles hanging on the wall. No more decoration besides these items. However, although Zhang Tai hadn't come here these days, the office was still well cleaned. Entering the office, Zhang Tai instantly threw himself onto the sofa with eyes fixed on 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping. Well, no crap, I know you're well informed. Tell me what happened last night. 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping had already realized that this military officer retired from the Iron Blood camp was different from others as he was more easygoing. However, actually, he was more complicated. As his subordinate, Pai Ping actually liked this kind of military officer. What 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping feared most were those eccentric guys who didn't know anything but wanted to manage everything. If such a director came to the No. 9 Equipment Administration, that would be the nightmare of everybody here. What Zhang Tai didn't know was that during the past two weeks, his indifferent attitude was even praised by people here. They all felt that he was a good officer and a good director. Before telling Zhang Tai the news, 2nd Lieutenant Pai Ping glanced outside the office. After ensuring that nobody was there, he closed the door himself before moving close to Zhang Tai like a thief. I have a friend in the air defense camp. He said many people were killed last night. One important warehouse of our logistics department was exploded by the airship of the Brilliant Feathers. Second Lieutenant Pai Ping said, his voice low. Zhang Tai became curious. Was that really an explosive? Really? Second Lieutenant Pai Ping nodded. It said that this was Sun Dynasty's revenge. Because a couple of days ago, our Mad Shark airship threw some heavy-type white phosphorus gel combustion bombs at the battle castle where their headquarters was located in the evening. Many people were killed there. The morale of Sun Dynasty was also weakened. Therefore, their move last night was to avenge themselves. Zhang Tai only felt frustrated. More revenge? Sometimes, wars between two countries and between two armies were no different from brawls between three to five-year-old kids. When you give me a fist, I will give you a kick. No one wanted to suffer a loss. However, compared to brawls between kids, this revenge was more terrifying and bloody and would cause more people to lose their lives. After the heads of the people of the Ironhorn army were chopped off, the people of the Iron Blood camp had to chop off their enemies' heads in revenge. As the Ironhorn army's air troop threw heavy type white phosphorus gel combustion bombs towards the battle castle where the opponent's headquarters was located, the opponent drove an airship into the air territory of Blapii and threw off explosives onto a logistics base of the Ironhorn army. Zhang Tai felt that perhaps, the battle castle and the front line had long prepared for the sneak attack from the Brilliant Feathers. Then, since they couldn't find a chance to launch a sneak attack in there, the Brilliant Feathers extended the battle line to the back of the Ironhorn army and directly hit the most important part due to the limited transportation capabilities. The logistics guarantee was truly one of the most essential parts of the Ironhorn army. Have their airship been brought down? After asking this question, Zhang Tai felt like an idiot. If the opponent's airship could casually drop off bombs onto the Ironhorn Army's logistics base in Blapii which was more than 100 kilometers away from the front line and leave without sustaining any damage, the war would not have lasted this long. Done, that's what the trouble is. Why? It's said that our air defense troop had truly hit their airship, so it crashed in a location over 20 kilometers away to the south of Blapii. However, when our troop arrived there, with the exception of some dead people in the airship, all the rest had disappeared. This is the biggest trouble. Now, nobody knows where the rest people from the airship had gone. Second Lieutenant Pai Ping let out a sigh. We didn't find many corpses on the airship, which means that all the others had left. This is big trouble since nobody knows whether those guys escaped back to their zone or are staying here. If some intelligence agents of the opponent who were lurking in Blapii take action together with those people who had fled, nobody can know what may happen next. If those guys have another bomb, they might even directly rush into the Parliament House of Blapii as suicide bombers. Hearing Pai Ping's words, Zhang Tai understood why the atmosphere in Blapii suddenly became tense. This was not only because of the explosion that occurred last night but that it had been confirmed that the dangerous opponents were lurking somewhere in Blapii. Even in his military uniform, Zhang Tai had still been requested to present his military officer's certificate three times on the way from his residence to the maintenance plant of the 9th Equipment Administration of the Comprehensive Logistics Relief Department. In order to catch those fleeing people, all the soldiers of the division stationed in Blapii walked through the streets. They started to set checking points to investigate all the passersby. By doing this, although they could not immediately catch those potential dangerous people, they could at least limit their movements to a degree. Before finally catching or killing them, this was the only method to deal with those people. Does the Ironhorn army have explosives? The word bomb reminded Zhang Tai of a question that he was interested in. Yes, they have. But the explosives of the army are the most important strategic material. 
Because they're very rare and precious, all the explosives' as assignments and use had to be approved and signed by the commander of the Ironhorn Army. In the entire Norman Empire, all the explosives are controlled by the imperial households. The only two alchemist masters who can produce explosives in the Norman Empire are both members of the royal senior's cabinet. Zhang Tai had only heard of the alchemist profession in legends. It was mentioned in the book Initial Exploration about the special professions of human beings in the Black Iron Age a couple of days ago. Whether in legends or reality, alchemists were ten times more rare than medicinal pharmacists. It was regarded as the most mysterious, wealthy, and terrifying profession in the Black Iron Age. Although many cities of the former Andaman Alliance had medicinal pharmacists like Abayan, in the entire Andaman Alliance, there were no alchemists at all. Alchemists would spend their whole lives dealing with various weird stones and crystals. As long as they had a stone or a crystal, they would be able to turn it into a treasure that could be used to fight, cultivate, cure diseases, even to improve the attributes of a number of metals and machines. After being processed by alchemists, many common crystals and stones could become 10,000 times more valuable, even more expensive than gold. As these people were truly able to touch a stone and turn it into gold, they were called alchemists. It was not only a description of their profession but people's obvious admiration for it. Alchemists were the only group of people who could produce explosives. A person, once he became an alchemist, would never care about money anymore. If one took the Norman Empire as an example, once any alchemist in this country was found to be able to produce explosives, he could instantly marry a royal offspring. Through kinship, that person would then benefit the Norman Empire on a military aspect. Alchemists had many nicknames like, treasure producers, mobile vaults, human bombs, and, thermal weapon time travelers in cold weapons era. It seemed that because of the last nickname which mentioned both science and technology before the catastrophe, many countries in the Blacks and Human Clan corridor would take owning an alchemist who could produce explosives as the symbol of powerful national strength and status. The former Andaman Alliance had once intended to attract an alchemist with the chief position and a great amount of benefits. Unluckily, they failed. When Zhang Tai arrived at the logistics base in the wild, over 30 kilometers south of Blapii, the airship which had caused great turmoil and damage was scattered on the ground in pieces. This airship which was used to launch the sneak attack was painted dark. Its pod was over 15 m in height. At this moment, the airship originally longer than 50 m had become a transformed rigid skeleton. For the coated fabric of the airship's air sac, besides a few remains, all the other parts were burned into solid pitch-dark carbides and were scattered around the pod and the airship skeleton. Some corpses in aqua-blue military uniforms were lying inside the wrecked pod in various shapes. A group of soldiers in dark red military uniform of the Norman Empire had already blocked the scene. A group of people in black windbreakers were looking for something among the dead soldiers of Sun Dynasty, accompanied by some military officers of the Norman Empire. The surrounding soldiers were glancing at the sanguine gloves of those people in black windbreakers with weird eyes. Those people in sanguine gloves were the main characters in all the darkest stories of the Norman Empire. They were the representatives of the cold and bloody side of the Norman Empire. If its soldiers were a group of fierce tigers, the group of people in sanguine gloves were a weird hybrid of jackals that lived on rotten meat and vipers that sprouted venom. These people came from another powerful department of the Norman Empire besides the Army Order Review Committee. These people were National Secret Police on Order Maintenance, under the affiliation of the Order Review Committee. In Nordenburg, everybody knew that the Viscount Nordenton, the head of Secret Police, and Marshal Lin Changjiang didn't like each other. Besides their superior, nobody else liked them in the entire Norman Empire. Because of the explosion last night, these people appeared in Blapii like flies that had smelt a stink. This event was within the governing category of the Ironhorn Army, however, these people in sanguine gloves wanted to get involved due to two reasons. First, the explosion was a special event threatening national security. With the exception of explosions on the battlefield, the investigation of all the other explosions in the Norman Empire was carried out by the Order Review Committee. Second, according to the laws of the Norman Empire, the Ironhorn Army could only govern the area within 100 kilometers of the front line of Kalar's battle zone. Since Blapii was out of this area, although the victim of this explosion case was the Ironhorn Army, the Order Review Committee still had the right to investigate this case. Because the Order Review Committee of Nordenburg had sent a notice to the Ironhorn Army, they expected that it would coordinate with the secret police to investigate this explosion case. So once they came to Blapii, even though unwilling, the military officers of the Ironhorn Army were dispatched here to assist these people who accomplished their own tasks with cold expressions. Additionally, they should report the latest events and discoveries of the Ironhorn Army to those in sanguine gloves when the latter inquired about what had happened last night. 
The head of these people in red sanguine gloves and black windbreakers was a major, a thirty-odd man with white hair and a pair of eyes as cruel as those of a wolf. Major, after our troop arrived here, we blocked the scene and it had remained unchanged. On the ground over 500 m away from the site where the airship crashed, our soldiers discovered truck tire marks which extended to the south. It's estimated that those fleeing had been picked up. We. The man in gray hair who was carefully checking the corpses revealed a wisp of an icy smile. At the same time, he raised his hand and interrupted the military officer who was reporting what had happened last night. No need to say it, I've already guessed what happened next. Your people found that truck over 10 kilometers away with nobody inside. Then you investigated the source of that truck and learned that the truck has been stolen in Blapii several days ago. After that, you judged that those people had escaped to the south, right captain? Revealing a surprised expression, the captain asked, how do you know? Congratulations, captain, you've successfully let go of a group of dangerous Sun Dynasty's people. When you were attracted by that truck driving to the south, the remaining saboteurs of the Sun Dynasty had escaped to the north. If you had changed your direction and chased after them at once, we might not be here. Those spies of the Sun Dynasty who hid in Blapii clearly knew how to trick you. That gray-haired major put it straightforwardly. The captain's face blushed so much that he could not even say a word, while a major who belonged to the same number 21 division as the captain wanted to argue more. Major Franca, our soldiers tried our best last night. With only one glance, how could you confirm those people on the airship had fled to the north, instead of the south? Of course I can. Major Franca from the The Order Review Committee of Norman Empire said with an icy expression. He took off his gloves and stretched high index finger. In front of the military officers of No. 21 Division, he squatted down and thrust his index finger into the hard skull of a corpse like he was thrusting it into a bean curd. He then moved up his index finger into the cranial cavity of that corpse before pulling it out with red and white brains juice. He then directly put it into his mouth and started to carefully taste it, eyes closed, as if he was tasting a yummy food. Although the military officers of No. 21 Division standing nearby were used to seeing corpses, at the sight of this behavior of tasting dead people's brains, their faces turned pale at once. They felt a bit disgusted and chilled, especially by that weird smile on Major Franca's face when he tasted the brains. After a long while, Major Franca opened his eyes and licked his lips as if he had enjoyed the taste of the brains. These people's brains taste like bitter Parmelia saxatilis. It's the aftereffect of Sun Dynasty's secret medicine when it was applied on people. Those who take it would trigger their physical potential for a short time. They also become very clear-minded, although they don't live too long. Only Dare to Die Corps would take this secret medicine. After taking it, in the troops of the Sun Dynasty, they had only one target, death instead of fleeing. These people would also face a death penalty even if they fled back. Before they arrived here, all of them had prepared not to go back alive. Therefore, they escaped to the north instead of to the south. If they escaped to the south, they would be held back by your frontline troops, however, if they escaped to the north, they could deal their damage to the greatest extent. In Blapii, they were picked up by spies of the Sun Dynasty. Additionally, their airship crashed in the south in order to cause an illusion for you that they were escaping to the south. This is still your presumption, the major of No. 21 Division kept arguing, face turning a bit pale. These people on the airship had died when the airship crashed. Those fleeing had to have been wounded, some even heavily. As they could not get medical treatment when escaping, even if they had strong vitality, their wounds must be deteriorating, which led to inconvenient movement. They would encumber the whole team. Based on the style of the Sun Dynasty, in this case, those heavily wounded people would be killed. Once we search all the way to the north while avoiding major routes, we will discover something. Major Franca gazed at the officers of No. 21 Division with wolf-like sharp eyes, revealing a contemptuous smile. You're good at fighting on the battlefield, but I'm not here to be your counterintelligence enlightening teacher. I only hope that if what I said is true, before finding those potential saboteurs, you won't interfere with my moves in Blapii. As my time is very precious, I don't want to waste too much time in Blapii for some trivial roles. Forcefully holding back their fury, the military officers of No. 21 Division exchanged glances with each other before nodding. Fuck, if not assigned here, nobody would want to stay with these guys in red gloves, they mumbled inside. Twenty minutes later, in a wild ditch five kilometers to the north of the crashing site, they found the first corpse. It was buried underground. However, as it had not been buried too long ago and was hurriedly dealt with in the evening, even though the people of the Sun Dynasty had covered it up, it was still discovered by Major Franca. In another place less than two kilometers away from the first one, the second corpse was discovered. Chapter 229, Learning. Zhang Tai only stayed in the maintenance plant for one morning. 
By afternoon, the notice from the logistics department of the Ironhorn Army about that sneak attack had been delivered to various subordinate organs and departments. The No. 9 Equipment Administration had already received one formal notice. It arrived in time. When many people in the entire Blapii became restless due to that loud sound and the flames last night, this notice made most of them recover their composure at once. In all times, people were not afraid of fact or truth, instead, they were afraid of having it concealed or getting cheated. The notice that Zhang Tai saw contained the details of the attack last night. The airship that launched the sneak attack on Blapii was a disguised Paradise-level wartime airship of the Sun Dynasty. This airship detoured around the air defense frontline in Kalar and dropped off an explosive in Blapii, which destroyed an important logistics warehouse. The explosion and the following big fire caused 116 casualties in the Iron Horn Army. Soon after that, the wartime airship of the Sun Dynasty was shot down. 27 corpses were found on the wrecked airship. Additionally, 11 to 15 saboteurs of the Sun Dynasty had fled after the airship crashed. With the help of Sun Dynasty's moles in Blapii, they might have already entered the city and were preparing to implement destructive activities. Now, the soldiers of the Norman Empire stationed in Blapii were chasing after these saboteurs. If anyone could provide any clues on these people, once the information was verified, they would gain a reward of 2,000 gold coins from the logistics department of the Ironhorn Army. The reward of 2,000 gold coins was alluring, but speaking of gold coins, Zhang Tai realized that the No. 9 Equipment Administration under his management, a small first lieutenant director, had so many hidden profits that they were even out of his imagination. After second lieutenant Pai Ping brought old account books of the Equipment Administration and explained the mysteries inside, Zhang Tai finally understood why this position was a lot of fun. The mysteries of No. 9 Equipment Administration was in the treatment of the wasted equipment here. Based on the rules on the management of military logistics equipment of the Norman Empire, in order to guarantee the quality and capability of the logistics transportation of the troops, besides normal wear, many parts and large-scale components like engines of the vehicles also had service limits. Once they were reached, the workers would be forced to discard them as useless and replace them with new parts and components. The hidden profits and gray income of the No. 9 Equipment Department lay in the vehicles and various parts and components of vehicles that were to be discarded as useless when they reached their service limits. Although those parts and components had reached their service limits, it didn't mean that they didn't work. If one took automobiles' engines for an instance, the service limit of a steam-driven engine regulated by the troops was 10 years. However, if they were in good maintenance, many steam-based engines were still working even after 15 years. That's why due to strict requirements on the quality of military products, the ones discard as useless were very popular among commoners. This also brought a huge profit for the No. 9 Equipment Department. After an overhaul and assemblage of the parts and components of automobiles, even whole vehicles might be discarded as useless iron when they reached their service limits. But they could be seen again and then sold, which was the largest legal income of the No. 9 Equipment Department. The people of No. 9 Equipment Department weren't the only ones who knew this, even some major officers of the logistics department of the army knew it too. But this deed got the acquiescence of the superiors. Why? Because if the No. 9 Equipment Department wanted to gain this part of revenue, they had to do a good job on the maintenance of all the vehicles of the logistics department. Those whole automobiles and the parts and components of automobiles couldn't be sold and bring hidden profits until they were forced to be discarded as useless. This was also an acquiesced reward and a means used to stimulate the subordinate departments to work seriously by the officers of the logistics administration of the army. The better the subordinate worked, the more they would gain. There were mainly three parties on this interest chain, the No. 9 Equipment Department, the Comprehensive Logistics Relief Branch of the Logistics Administration of the Ironhorn Army which was the direct superior of No. 9 Equipment Department, a business group of the Norman Empire which had long cooperated with the Logistics Administration of the Ironhorn Army. No. 9 Equipment Department was responsible for renovation, recovery, and assemblage of whole vehicles as well as parts and components of vehicles that were discarded as useless. Some officers of the Comprehensive Logistics Relief Branch were responsible for selling these whole vehicles as well as parts and components of vehicles which were still available after renovation. The business group which had cooperated with the Army's Logistics Administration was responsible for receiving deliveries. In this whole process, a set of streamlike profit distribution and working mode was formed from which all three parties could gain benefits. After learning of the mysteries inside it, Zhang Tai had a better image of the Norman Empire. Besides the strict hierarchical system, its other aspects were actually flexible. Certainly, people's nature for profit remained unchanged no matter which country they were in. 
The number 9 equipment department that fought in the front line could share 60% of the profits while the rest 40% of profits were taken away. For the 60% of profits, based on the current distribution mode of number 9 equipment department, all the soldiers received half of the profits, namely 30% of the total profits. Second Lieutenant Pai Ping, the vice director of number 9 equipment administration who was mainly responsible for managing the maintenance plant and solving various concrete problems could gain 10% of the total profits, while the director of number 9 equipment department could gain 20% of the total profits. After practicing for many years, the 4-3-2-1 distribution mode could satisfy everybody on this interest chain. Only two weeks after he became the director of number 9 equipment department, Zhang Tai had already gained 21 gold coins from profit sharing, which was many times higher than his salary as a first lieutenant. Additionally, it was legal. Zhang Tai knew that Colonel Sharto had really found a good position for him given his contribution to the Iron Blood camp. After staying in the plant for a whole day, Zhang Tai found that he could learn a lot from the Iron Horn Army. When in the Iron Blood camp, he learned how to fight and kill. While in the number 9 equipment department in the back, he could still learn a lot. Through the attitude of logistics administration to the number 9 equipment department, he learned how to manage his subordinates. Although the system was fixed, the management was flexible. Everything was determined by the decision maker's choices and attitude. Of course, the officers of the logistics administration could choose another way such as forcing the number 9 equipment department to submit all the whole vehicles as well as parts and components of the vehicles that were discarded as useless. However, if they truly did so, what they submitted might truly be useless. Additionally, in the logistics administration of the entire Ironhorn army, the number of accidents that arose due to improper maintenance would increase greatly. No matter what, once problems were found, they only needed to apply for new parts, components, or equipment and request for a superior's assignment. Nobody wanted to smell engine oil by lying under the vehicles every day. From that gray interest chain, Zhang Tai learned a secret on long-term development, teamwork and profit distribution. If a person could not finish it, then, you could gather a group of people, enabling them to share benefits from their contributions. Besides, he also learned the most solid and practicable knowledge from the number 9 equipment department, maintenance. After taking off his first lieutenant's uniform, Zhang Tai put on work clothes and stayed with those technical sergeants in the maintenance workshop for an afternoon. He felt that he had learned more of maintenance here than that he had at school after three years. During this afternoon, he was taught how to change vehicle's tires and main driving axle and gained a general idea of vehicle maintenance. Even Zhang Tai himself didn't know how his nickname, Second Lieutenant Mummy, had spread to the number 9 equipment department. With this special nickname, he was not like an officer at all. Besides, he was also kind to others. When he was confused about something, he would modestly ask the soldiers to explain it to him. Like when he came to the Iron Blood camp at the beginning, Zhang Tai quickly integrated himself with the people in the number 9 equipment department in only one day. Everybody here now knew that the new first lieutenant was a funny guy. After staying in the logistics base for a day, Zhang Tai left at dusk. This was a harvest day for him as he had come here with empty hands but left with gold coins and a lot of knowledge. Zhang Tai wanted to buy some beer yeast and prepare some gifts for Hana and see what other animals he could set free, so he didn't take a car. Instead, he got ready to look around Blapi after he walked out of the logistics base. Zhang Tai didn't know that two farmers in grass hats who were bending over to do farming work on the roadside field close to the logistics base had their eyes fixed onto him from the moment he walked out of the base. A first lieutenant at a young age who can freely access this place. From his walking pattern and strength, he seems to be lacking physical strength. In the Norman Empire, officers in the logistics base don't need to have great strength. Will we do it? We need to test his real strength. Nowadays, these red hide dogs are more anxious than us. Since we've lurked in Blapii for so long, we have to do a big one this time. The two farmers didn't say anything else, instead, they just exchanged glances which contained a lot of information. Zhang Tai didn't know that he had been watched by others. After hiring a horse taxi, he looked around Blapii for a while. In one shop, he bought a packet of beer yeast. The moment he held it, Zhang Tai recalled something. Oh, I almost forgot about the mutated yeast in the castle of Black Iron. Mom said that that kind of yeast can be used to brew some light drinks. Why not let Hannah have a try? Chapter 230, Crisis in Paradise In the next few days, Zhang Tai lived a tranquil life. Although the atmosphere was still intense in Blapii, he felt that it had basically nothing to do with him. He was almost a disabled man now who was just doing nothing on a post in the logistics department while that job of chasing after fleeing saboteurs had nothing to do with him. With this mentality, Zhang Tai didn't feel restless at all. However, he didn't know that since he had not completely recovered, 
his sense for danger being close to him was not as sharp as before. Zhang Tai didn't perceive any danger drawing close to him. In Shevli, he was still the most popular person. Each day, after setting the earthworms free, he would go to the wheat straw's drying site to have a hot kiss with Hannah before returning to his rental estate downtown. Using the special output function of the Castle of Black Iron, Zhang Tai only spent a bit of basic energy storage, aura value points, and merit value points before producing a packet of aura value yeast powder and gifting it to Hannah. The content of each indicator in that packet of yeast powder was only one third of the original content. Because Zhang Tai didn't know whether it would bring trouble if he took out the complete yeast, he only took out an abridged version. But even though he did that, it was still unique. With the exception of yeast powder, Zhang Tai also sent a small gift to Hannah. Based on his style, like how he had sent gifts to the girls of the Rose Association, this small gift also worked well at the critical moment, which could also capture girl's heart. He gifted Hannah with a pair of beautiful gold bracelets heavier than 200 grams that he bought in a jewelry store in Blapii. Hannah's skin was white and smooth, additionally, she was more plump than average girls. Zhang Tai felt that she should be more beautiful in this pair of bracelets as there was a sharp color difference between the gold and her skin, so he bought it. No matter what, Zhang Tai didn't lack money. If he was killed in a battle like that night's bloody fight one day, what would his remaining money be used for? For buying himself a cemetery? Only by spending all the money he had to satisfy his beloved ones could it be meaningful. Otherwise, there was no difference between a kilogram of gold coins and a kilogram of iron sheets. When Hannah received that pair of gold bracelets in that secret space under the wheat straw stack, she cried. Seeing such a sunny girl crying for the first time, Zhang Tai was so scared that he hurriedly comforted her for quite a while before managing to stop her tears. Hannah told Zhang Tai that even if she married someone later, she would not receive such expensive betrothal presents. This pair of bracelets could already be her family heirloom in the future. If you take this pair of bracelets to propose to me in my home, I'm sure, my parents would very willingly take you as a son-in-law to bear the bride's family name, although you don't seem like able to work harder than my elder brother in the fields. Hannah said. However, after saying this, before Zhang Tai could open his mouth, she had already giggled as she supported his face and kissed him, putting it straightforwardly and honestly, however, I know you won't stay too long in Blay P.I. From the first day I saw you, I already knew that you were not meant for this kind of farming work but I am doomed to live here. It's impossible for you and me to stay together forever. Since the first time when we started carrying on with this clandestine love affair, I've know that you must have a lot of women. Perhaps your women are waiting for you back home or maybe you like to thrust your bad thing into different women's bodies to conquer them. You want to let them beg forgiveness in front of you and heavily f asterisk ck them so that they can obediently kneel down before you to drink your milk like me. Is it true or not, my little man? Hearing the words, little man, Zhang Tai's d asterisk ck became so hard that it instantly became crazy. When he entered Hannah's body, he hadn't even taken off his pants. He just raised her skirt violently and pressed her onto the wheat straw stack. The next moment he pushed away her underwear and revealed her vagina. With Hannah's exclamations, a crazy storm arrived. That day, Hannah cried twice, once for her soul being moved and once for having collapsed physically. However, since that day onward, Hannah and Zhang Tai had carried out their clandestine love affair in a braver way. She usually stimulated Zhang Tai with the words like, little man, after which he always became rude and violent. Zhang Tai liked that stimulation and excitement brought by the clandestine love affair between him and Hannah. He usually immersed in the limitless pleasure brought by her body. Additionally, when Hannah brought him pleasure, she also touched the most hidden side of their love affair. Since he heard the appellation, little man, which triggered his passion on that day, each time they stayed with each other, Hannah would always stimulate Zhang Tai's nerves and tap the hidden source of excitement in his inner heart. From this, Hannah seemed to obtain the greatest pleasure and an unspeakable satisfaction. If the girls of the Rose Association and Pandora, Beverly, and Alice had slightly opened one door inside Zhang Tai's body, Hannah had completely pushed it open. In this average village, Zhang Tai felt that he was living in an absolute paradise these days. When he set the earthworms free, saw them drill into the soil and avoid becoming fodder, he really felt energy converging in his body. It immediately made him feel like he was filled with pleasure and lightness both mentally and physically. He felt like he was taking a bath in a river of pleasure, which made each of his cells cheer up, bringing him a sense of new birth. That was the pleasure from the earthworms which was transferred to him, making him cheer up through a mysterious link pattern. Whether it was a pleasure from setting the earthworms free or from staying with Hannah, Zhang Tai felt cool physically and mentally and had an impulse to immerse himself into it and never change. Every day, he would try his best to set free earthworms, take off his pants to f asterisk ck a woman, and go back home to eat fruits. Such a life made Zhang Tai feel like living in a paradise. 
He thought that this might be the right lifestyle that people should have, redemption, pleasure, recovery and growth every day. To please both oneself and others and to not harm anyone, isn't such a life better than the life full of intrigues and plots? Go to hell, mother fasterist King Keller, go to hell, mother fasterist King War. In this happiness, Zhang Tai's wounds were rapidly recovering. Soon, his wounds had recovered by about one-fifth, reaching 21.8% of his original physical condition. Although the strength of his burning points and his hidden strength of the iron blood fist skill were still not available, the effects of the numerous wild wolf seven strength fruits that he had eaten could already slightly be seen. At this moment, Zhang Tai's strength had almost reached that of LV2 glaze. Is there a mature woman who's much older than you in your heart? She's tall with plump breasts and buttocks. She's very womanly and might be the senior in your life. She's your teacher, right? Today, after making love, when the two put on clothes in the wheat straw stack, Hannah who was buttoning on her bra suddenly asked Zhang Tai. Hearing Hannah's presumption, Zhang Tai became abruptly dumbfounded, stopping midway putting on his pants. With an amazed expression, he stared at Hannah. How did you know? Each time I treat you as a kid these days, you want to prove yourself to me. At that time, you would always use more strength when grabbing my breasts and butt. You would try to grab me as a whole and would f asterisk ck me forcefully. Today you wanted to prove it more than before. Hannah pointed at several marks left by Zhang Tai's hands on her plump breasts, which were caused soon after she said, Little man, come for your teacher, so today, Zhang Tai had become more barbarous than before. Are women born to be psychologists? How could she think of this? After being dumbfounded for quite a while, Zhang Tai became bashful and forced a smile. I'm sorry, I don't know how could I become like this, is it painful now? Hannah shook her head and smiled. It doesn't matter, you're just taking me as that woman in your subconsciousness. I also like this. Hannah replied, squatting on the straws. When she finished putting on her corsage, she grabbed Zhang Tai's mummy and swam her little golden fish around it. After that, she put it in her mouth, forcefully sucking and spitting several times. After that, she helped Zhang Tai put his pants back with a giggle and pulled up the zipper. She then slightly patted it. You bad thing, you most like to f asterisk ck those mature women, right? I'll show you something next time. Being stimulated like this by Hannah, Zhang Tai almost could not stand it. However, as it was a bit late now, he held it in. Besides, Zhang Tai remembered something. Oh, I almost forgot it, do any people in your village want to lease their house? What? Do you want to rent a house in our village? Hannah cast a weird eye at Zhang Tai before she quickly put away the apron that was spread on the ground. Yes, I feel like I'm wasting so much time on the way from the downtown to your village. I want to buy all the earthworms in your village and since there are many households queuing up, I have to come to your village every day, which is too troublesome. I'd better just live here and go back to the downtown once a week from then on. After coming and going many times, Zhang Tai decided that he was a bit foolish. Why make it this troublesome? Why not just rent a room here in Chevly? Given the recovery of his body, Zhang Tai felt that he had to come here quite often. If he rented out a room here, it would not be necessary for him to spend a couple hours each day traveling back and forth. More so, it would not even cost him a gold coin to rent a house for a year here. Hannah rolled her eyes in a witty way. I can find you a house, but what's your reward? Isn't this enough? Not knowing what Hannah was thinking, Zhang Tai felt very funny and forcefully pinched her but twice. Of course not enough, I want you to give me a gift, she said like a spoiled child. What gift? Zhang Tai became a bit curious. He knew that Hannah was not a greedy woman. As long as they've been staying together, unless he took the initiative, she had never asked for anything before, it was Hannah's first time asking him for a gift. You can buy me a set of clothes that your favorite woman always liked to wear, she whispered in his ear, exhaling. Hearing her words, Zhang Tai was dumbfounded. He had never imagined that she might want this. All right? When he left Chevly once again, Zhang Tai was still recalling Hannah's requirement. After Hannah let him know that he likes most those mature and much older sexy women, Zhang Tai also realized that she had some weird hobbies of her own these days. When she made love with Zhang Tai, she seemed to treat him as any other person while fantasizing some scenes. The more rude he became, the happier she would be. Hannah let Zhang Tai understand that perhaps everybody had a bit weird and utterly different thoughts about sex. He liked mature women while Hannah liked weird fantasies. Zhang Tai wondered whether those sanctimonious people liked some even weirder things or not. Zhang Tai walked alone on the country lane from Chevly to Tonica's this time. Although he hadn't been familiar with the route when he came here some time ago, now, he could already return even in darkness. As there were not many plants and chimneys, the sky of Blaypi in the evening was more resplendent than that in Black Hot City. In a nice mood, Zhang Tai whistled as he walked on the country lane alone, thinking some weird thoughts inside. He was trying to recall in which set of clothes Miss Dana looked most beautiful. 
After carefully thinking it over a couple times, Zhang Tai still couldn't decide as Miss Dana was always the most beautiful no matter what she wore. What kind of clothes should I gift Hannah? Zhang Tai was puzzled by this problem. That goblin must be thinking of playing some tricks. However, thinking of the pleasures that Hannah brought him, Zhang Tai's heart pounded. No matter whether it was sprinting by embracing her but or riding on her to enjoy a special tenderness, Zhang Tai would always feel that Hannah made him more comfortable and excited with her more mature tenderness than the girls of the Rose Association or Alice, Beverly, and Pandora. While he was considering what kind of clothes he could send to Hannah, an image of a woman in a skin-tight skirt and high-heeled boots, full of temptation, suddenly appeared in Zhang Tai's mind. She was feeling helpless and was covering her breasts while standing in the shadow. It was the female tenant who had vomited on Zhang Tai the first time she saw him. She lived on the third floor of Mr. and Mrs. Green's house. The moment he thought back to that mature and alluring woman, the fifteen-year-old mummy suddenly became hard again. Hannah was right. He liked most those mature women who were much older than him as they were extremely attractive to him. He didn't know whether all male adolescents thought so or not. A person seemed to be sitting on the roadside up ahead. That person who looked like a farmer was groaning, hugging his feet. He seemed to be suffering from a wound on his feet. Walking closer, Zhang Tai didn't think too much about it. He just paused for a second before directly walking towards him, squatting down. Hi, do you need help? That person then turned and stared at Zhang Tai with no pain in his expression. When Zhang Tai felt that something was not right, that person suddenly revealed a thin pipe in his mouth. Soon after that, a needle blew out from that fine pipe. Before Zhang Tai could make any response, he felt that his neck was stung. Moments later, heavy sense of dizziness attacked him like a huge wave. Squatting on the ground, Zhang Tai swayed twice before falling down. Come on, we got him, that farmer said in a low voice. A moment before he passed out, Zhang Tai saw people rushing out of the reeds next to the roadside and walking towards him. Mother Fastress Kurz, I did nothing these days, whom have I offended? An irresistible darkness suddenly attacked him. Zhang Tai was put into a bag and hefted up. The group of people then quickly disappeared from the country lane. 